Gang, in this podcast right here, yeah, there is a lot of conversation about the consumption of mushrooms and psychedelics. But I just want to make a very strong disclaimer right here. In no way, in no way are we telling people to go out and do mushrooms or to take psychedelics. And in no way are we saying to go and break the law. Don't believe what you um, hear. Go and do your own research. Whatever you go and do, make sure you go and do your own research. Don't believe blindly. Enjoy. Mushrooms arrived to this realm in our solar system by way of spaceships. What? You the people who this stuff was gifted to going back thousands of years, they're not using it for anxiety, depression, and PTSD and stuff like that. They're using it, they say, to connect with their ancestors. Right. True cowboys and cowgirls were the gatekeepers for the cows. They took care of the cows because they considered the cows sacred, not because, you know, it provided milk and meat and manure like many other animals do. The mushroom. Oh yeah, for sure. And there's a lot more to it than that. And that's what I think is important to make sure there's a balanced perspective. And currently in the, you know, with all the research and the trials and stuff like that, it's just like one dimensional. And that's because the West is sick. Europeans, European culture, and the byproducts of that is messed up, it's ill. Going back to that initial point, what's the benefit? What's the purpose? And I just think like, bro, it can make the hood a better place, bro. And I don't I'm know. curious, isn't it? Mm, mm, I am, mm, but mm. I'm a curious person anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm yeah, pussy. Yeah. Right, so, Basically, um, I did an episode with JME and a man called Anil, a scientist, shall I say, certified, one of the most, one of the leading scientists in the country, yeah? And we were talking about consciousness and all different types of stuff in that, in that episode. And I think like, you know what? You watch me enough, you know that I'm like a mad curious person. I always bring up things. In fact, um, Sometimes when I'm outside, yeah, people come up to me and they're like, oh, do you know what? I remember like this one particular situation where this person came up to me and was like, oh, I want to have a deep conversation with you. I want to have a deep conversation with you. So I was like, okay, w what do you want to talk about? I don't know. Let let's talk about something. So I said to her, okay. I said, what is right and what is wrong? And then, so she started to try to just break down what she felt was right and what was wrong. And I started running some circles around her. And then her mind started to think, rah, like, is this right and what is wrong and whatever else and blah, blah. And it ended up being quite an interesting conversation. I could start seeing light bulb moments with her. But talking of light bulb moments, when we was talking, I'm um, having Anil and Jeremy on the episode and we were talking about consciousness, a part of it, we started talking about psychedelics, yeah? And then another light part of it ended up being about mushrooms. Now, what is interesting is, right, um, before I did that episode, uh, my cousin, my cousin's missus said to me, we was talking about mushrooms, and she said to me, ah, oh, there's this guy. You should like, like, get him on the pod. Like, you should get him on the pod, whatever. She showed me his Instagram. And I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll bank it and I'll keep it in mind. Then... The episode came out and then a few people then hit me and said, yo, there's this guy. Yo, hot, like, get him on, get him on. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> this guy is here. I'm, I wanna make sure that I'm saying the name right. It's Darren LeBaron. Baron. Le, Darren LeBaron. Darren LeBaron. Yeah, you got it. Yeah? yeah? Now, how do I introduce you? Because I know that you're like, you've done some work in schools and stuff like that. You're, mm -hmm. you're like, you're in some way a, a teacher yeah, um, yeah. and spent like a lot of time talking about mushrooms and psychedelics, right? You got it. Is yeah. there anything else I need to add to who it is and what you actually do? No, bro, that's good enough, man. I wear many hats, so it already kind of depends the place and space that I'm in. You know, I've got many tools in my toolbox, but primarily I'm just an educator, man. I'm an educator, work with young people in schools, like you said, and teach and educate people about a range of different things. But right. I guess today is what, what pulls it all together is like mushrooms and psychedelics. So right. that's one of the things I educate people about. Well, I want, because I'm a curious person in it, yeah? So I want to pick your brains on some things mm -hmm. and just have a like open conversation cool, on that, yeah? So you just give me as much in insight and educate me as best as you possibly can. Sure. Because I am, a, when it comes to this, I am somewhat of a novice. I know things, innit? But mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. my curiosity is really peaking at the moment. It's really peaking. Yeah, so 
I know that like over the last 15 years or so, you've been like a super advocate for maybe like mushrooms in particular, mm. but like also some types of psychedelics, right? For sure. Why? Wow. Okay. Why? Because just like you, man, I've got a curious mind and that's been since I was at school and I've been on what I would say a lifelong journey of just trying to work myself out, man. Like what, who am I? What am I here for? What's the purpose of life? Those kind of questions. And on that journey of like learning different things about myself, my history, my culture, all I can say is in psychedelics came up, man. And um, in the early days, it was something that I was putting to the side. It was like, nah, the psychedelics can't be part and parcel of my personal spiritual development. Like it's a drug, isn't it? Like for the most part, psychedelics growing up for me was like what the white boys I went to school with were doing, man. They were like, 100%. yeah, they were going up the Heath, Hampstead Heath, wherever it was, Parliament Hill and popping pills and doing mushrooms, coming back to school on Monday saying, yo man, we was in the forest and the aliens came down and we were yeah, plugging trees yeah, and yeah. all that. I mean, the homies were like, yo man, they might not on some druggy thing, isn't it? Like mm. same speed, you know, like we grew up culturally, it was accepted to, you know, to smoke weed bit of drink here and there that's our thing in it so that was like way over there way left field so as i delved into just learning more about african spirituality which i'm like an advocate for and just world history and just learning about who we are where we come from you know i come to find out that a lot of our practices involve certain plants right. certain you know stews and brews and thick concoctions that they put you know they bring together and um eventually i come to discover that a big part of that was psychedelics and i was like yo pretty much my whole life. I thought this is just like what white boys and white folk and the hippie movement were all about. But for the most part, this is like fundamental to African spirituality. And I was always keen to know what were we doing before Christianity, innit? Like what, we, what were we mm. doing back home on our own lands before, you know, these alternative religions were offered. And I've come to find out that the foundations of that were psychedelics, bro. Mm. And not only within African culture, it's, it's kind of like world history, man. It's like, it's out there. It's like readily available for you to access the information, at least if you're interested. We say a lot of it is kind of hidden in plain sight. Mm. It's, like it's right in front of you, bro. But if you're not privy to it, like you could, you could bypass it. But that curiosities that I had was basically like the, just the inspiration for me wanting to learn more. And um, the teachers, the elders that were around over the years of me just sharing and exchanging knowledge and information with them, they was like, yo man, it's your time to step up and like be seen and heard. Right. Cause for the most part, I like to be in a cup, bro. I like to be behind the scenes. I was organizing a lot, pushing people up there and out there, but I was like behind the scenes. But folks were like, no man, like you're representing a very small minority of people coming from where you come from. And if you don't stand up and say something like who else is kind of mm. thing. So it was like, those are the inspirations for me, like stepping out and just, yeah, spreading the spores as I refer to it. That's an interesting point what you mentioned, you know, because like growing up as well, like for me, like that side of it was more, it was more a white boy kind of thing, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. Like that, like, yeah, man, then would just, they, these that would just go off and they would like do whatever it was that they was doing and then mm, come back mm. and then just come with these mad stories or yeah. whatnot. <laughs> or, or it was like, some of it was um, in my mind rooted in like, in the seventies or whatever, when they were like, you know, people going to festivals and, mm -hmm. and doing all mm -hmm. kinds of shit. That's as far back as it went for me. And then also then like the, the, the negative side of like, you know, like heroin and what that what that did to like mm -hmm. black certain mm -hmm. communities, especially like black community and crack and all of these type sure, of things sure. that kind of went like later on down the line. But they I never I never until in recent times started to think that way, like there's an element of this psychedelics thing that goes back probably like millions of years. And where, like, okay, where did your, where did your research start? I know it's such a broad question, yeah? Mm. But where did it start for you exactly though? In regards to the psychedelic yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I say, because I had this interest going back to my, you know, my early teens, I've always kind of been picking up books, learning and stuff and, you know, just processing information. So it was always there. But like I said, I was kind of just putting to the side like, nah, that, this is not, you know, I want to do, I was getting into like meditation and breath work and, right. you know, utilising technology as I like to refer to it without any external influences, you know what I'm saying? It was like, oh, the creator, God, the most high is giving you everything you need, like just work with it, innit? And then as I was diving deeper into those practices, I had two teachers in particular. One was Bobby Hemmett, his name is, and um, he introduced me to a book titled DMT, The Spirit Molecule. And in this book, it was basically how he was breaking it down. It was like this DMT molecule, this chemical was connected to melatonin and melanin. 
right. and people who are privy to melatonin and melanin. Melanin is what makes people of colour. You know, it gives us our hue, our colour. And melatonin is like all to do with like melanin in the brain internally. And he's like, yo, these hallucinogenics, these psychedelics are connected to, connected to melanin and melatonin. That was that for me. That was like, yo. I've never heard that before, you know mm. what I'm saying? So that was, a, you know, a trigger, so to speak, a positive one for me to go start exploring that. Then as I opened up that wormhole, as we would, I would refer to it, it then I, I then returned to one of uh, another one of my teachers called Kalindi E, who everybody needs to find out who he is. I'll spell it for you. Yeah, K-I-L-I-N-D-I. Kalindi, and his last name is E, spelled I-Y-I. -I. Where's he from? He's from Detroit. Okay. He's actually not no longer here in the physical form. We are right. just about to approach the third year of um, his transition from this realm, from right. the physical realm. So um, with that said, at that time, I knew him. We was privy as far as like the woke conscious community, you know, the African Caribbean community at least, um, of him being a martial artist. That's what he talked about, the African origins of martial arts. That in itself is a taboo subject. Like martial arts most people think are Asian practice yeah. but he was just breaking down all of this is like coming out of Africa and migrated to other parts of the world but at the same time in this presentation that I was received because I was like yo I'm learn I want to learn more about DMT and this mushroom stuff and then people were saying yo you need to check out Kalindi's work but I'm like not the martial arts guy I know he does martial arts Lots, and right, that but right. like no I'm talking about you know psychedelics and stuff they're like yo you need to check out some works of his then when I checked out this particular DVD at the time if people remember DVDs yeah I remember that <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I've dived in flung this DVD in, and bro it blew my mind because he was showing and teaching things that I was privy to right. but again he was just sharing and revealing stuff that was like I said was hidden in plain sight you know like Egyptian hieroglyphs as most people know it you know just certain historical images and symbols that I was privy to from another angle so to speak but he was like yo this is all to do with mushrooms and mushroom mythology and not only that he was like martial arts were birthed out of the mushrooms right. you know what I'm saying meditation swings roundabouts traffic lights the iPhone all of these phenomenons that we deal with in the hair in the hair and now those blueprints were downloaded from the entheogenic realms or the psychedelic realms and that's well documented as well, bro. Like a lot of this stuff, like I said, is well, is like in your face. What what did you, what did you say his name was again? Sorry, Kalindi E. Kalindi E. Yeah. What was okay? Because and I, I got a bunch of questions here that I need to ask you, but I know this is gonna make me just want to ask even more questions. Mm -hmm. It's funny the way that I have this conversation planned out in my head is not gonna be anywhere near because I'm gonna just keep thinking of stuff. What was like one of the the most profound, just one mm -hmm. um, thing that you learned from him? Like, what was like the one thing that really made you think, "Now, nah, hold on, wait." If I'll be honest, the first thing that what really resonated, bro, for me personally, was that it was a black man talking about this stuff, and he spoke my language. Like, it proper resonated. Like, as I started to delve into this curiosity of knowing it, it was basically dominated by white people, doctors, scientists, you know what I'm saying? And that was, you know, people, that, that was the narrative, and that still is the current narrative. But for me personally, to see a man who I was familiar with, who looks like me, right. you know, speaks my language, that in itself just made me feel secure, bro. Like, I felt a, there was a safety element to it, right. you know what I'm saying, personally. And then as far as his teachings and what he shared, because like I said, it was a lot of the stuff I was already kind of familiar with yeah. from a historical lens, you know what I'm saying? Because I've, I've always been inter interested in African history and ancient Egypt and all them kind of things there. So for me, for him to reveal what he was revealing through this lens that I was familiar with, mm. it was just like, yo, I need to explore this and do this more. Right. So then what he actually imparted on me, bro, which I think is like the most sustainable thing that I could ever receive from him, he taught me how to grow mushrooms, man. Okay. <laughs> that was it, man. He taught me how to grow mushrooms. And like he said, he goes, I'm gonna teach you how to grow mushrooms. You're gonna eat mushrooms. Then when you finish doing that, come see me, innit? Right. That's how right. he dealt with me. It was like, he weren't one of these teachers who's like, yeah, I'm trying to lead you down this path and lead you on to be like me or do what I do. It's like, I'm gonna teach you how to grow mushrooms. You're gonna eat mushrooms and then come see me afterwards. And then we can reason. And then we can talk. Yeah, man. And that's what we started. That's what I done, that. bro. That's what I done, man. And that's how I share it with people in the same way. From your understanding, mm. how far back can you trace plant medicine? And what were they using it for? Sure, sure, sure. So um, first and foremost, like obviously, as you mentioned, I've, I'm, I, I kind of like, I'm mushroom bias, you know what I'm yeah, saying? In, yeah. in that regards, I lean to that more. Um, and it's really important, part of the narrative that we need to really make clear is that mushrooms are not plants. You know what I'm saying? So th that's kind of like the narrative in this space, plant medicine, people refer to it as plant medicine. That's cool, I get it. But mushrooms are not plants. That's the first thing, they're fungi. They're in their own kingdom. 
and they actually predate plants. They've been there longer than plants, at least over 500 million years before plants. So when it comes to the role that mushrooms play, there's like a lot that, that I'll, I'll, I don't have to have time on this platform, but to share like mushrooms created soil, bro. It's not just the, like the psychedelic mushroom thing that I'm interested in. Like mushrooms as a whole, I have a background in food growing and ecology and stuff like that. Right. So just the role that mushrooms have played in preparing the earth, as some would say for our arrival, for human evolution, they play a big part in that. I actually have a slogan, some people refer to it and they say it's a slogan, but I actually believe in it, I know it. It's called Euro Mushroom Having a Human Experience. Right. I'll repeat that again. You're a mushroom having a human experience. And when you get into... Expand, expand on that. All right. So ma many people may have heard of the notion, you know, your, your spiritual being or your soul come down here and living out a human experience. Um, you know, I've come from that school of thought and I understand it. But when you understand the role that mushrooms have played in the preparation for planet earth i break down like this i'll give it to you the story form that i teach yeah please we ain't we ain't got listen we've, we've got all the time in the world cool man so no rush so cut a long story short mushrooms arrived to this realm in our solar system by way of spaceships what ufos aka ifos because we identified that these flying objects were asteroids meteorites and comets which the ancients used to deify they turned them into deities into gods into, into archetypes but mushrooms the spores which are like the seed element of mushrooms arrived on these crafts that's how it's broken down in mythology even the ancients talk about this science is now talking about it because they're just catching up with mythology so they refer to this phenomenon as panspermia p-a-n spermia and this phenomenon is that these astral alien not bodies not from earth from beyond our solar system brought these key ingredients into our solar system that kick-started life and that's like mushroom spores certain minerals even water bro they science nasa and all these guys are now saying yo this stuff didn't actually start on earth it came from beyond earth it's extraterrestrial it's beyond earth it's not no spooky stuff not no hollywood stuff just that it doesn't it didn't come from our solar system now when you get into the mythology side of things like what the ancients talk about they talk about deities or gods for lack of a better title sending these things this way to start a project to, to kick start or restart reignite life on this planet again again i don't want to get too deep or drift from you know that do side what you of need things. to do but uh, do what you need to do bro i mean i've got questions that are probably going to go down there anyway but but yeah, go on anyway, sorry. So as far as these passengers, as I like to refer to them, these spores that were on these spaceships, on these crafts that arrived to this planet, some of them made it into the ocean. At that time, in the seas in the ocean, there was life in there, you know, sea life. Right, right, right. But on the land, it was barren, bruv. It was just bedrock, just the rock as we know it today, minerals. And that, you know, if people remember Flintstones and cavemen and all that type of shit, it was that. But no humans, no life on earth whatsoever. So who, okay, let me stop you. Who was there to tell this story? Okay, so we're gonna like what you're gonna find out is that these stories, these narratives are in iCloud, the entheogenic iCloud. Let's call it the psychedelic iCloud. Right. They're stored. There's information that's stored in certain places and spaces that different cultures have been able to tap into and download from. Like all the technology we're dealing with today, bro, is like ancient. There's an organic version of it, and there's some what I like to. Yeah, there's some folks that have created physical representations of it, done a very good job at it, and that's what it drives us drives the future today but actually it's ancient stuff so we're you know like how we look at you know downloading files off the internet you know like there's an internet in the soil that's the mycelium network that's the mushroom network right, okay. so where as far as where do these stories come from well they come from beyond earth it's stored inside of us that's where ultimately it's stored bro it's stored in our blood it's stored in our genes in our dna that's why it's important to have these kind of ancestral connections and those stories have been shared and told over you know periods of time it's what we call oral traditions so that's how it's kind of been passed down in mythology but science now is saying the same thing they're not even like they're just giving you the scientific perspective and what they're saying is that when these spores came to earth what, what mushrooms do, they're nature's natural recyclers. Anybody who's into recycling or composting, we learned that through mushrooms. Right. Because mushrooms are nature's recyclers. What they do, they com decompose organic matter. And organic matter is any and everything that's ever been alive on this planet needs to be broken down by mushrooms. So anybody sitting in this room that's alive, just know that one day, mushrooms got to eat you, bro. Like, it's got to break you down and turn you back into soil again. 
So we have these sayings like ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We come from the soil, we go back to the soil. Well, mushrooms are the main players. They're the ones who facilitate that and make it happen. I always say that mushrooms are the party starters. They hold space and they lock off the dance. Right. Like, that's what they do. Like, <laughs> if anybody understands that, like they do all yeah. of that. Like They're the ones who will make it happen. So going back to that original story, when they came, bro, as decomposers, they had no organic matter to break down. That's what they do. They eat. Mushrooms eat and breathe and do exactly what we do. They actually been doing it before us. That's why I say like we more like mimicking what mushrooms do than mushrooms doing what we do because they've right. been down there doing it millions of years. So when these spores arrived, they had to break. They had to. They want to eat and drink. There's nothing to eat and drink. All that was around, bruv, was the rock, was the bedrock. So they had to break down the bedrock, basically what we call colonizing to break down, decompose it, and cut a long story short, bro. Where mushrooms eat rock, they shit out soil. They created soil. Mushrooms created the first layers of soil on this planet. And therefore, 500 million years later, plants could evolve. And then millions of years later, bro, we came out of the soil. You know what I'm saying? And so essentially, this you, it's essentially you're saying that we come from mushrooms. They play a big part. They yeah, play man. a big part. Yeah, man. Yeah, especially in, in the physical side of our physical being. Is this back? Is this backed by science? As oh yeah, well? man. As I said, panspermia. Go, people. Go do your googles, man. Don't go do your googles. Like as I say all the time, like. For the most part, bro, the reason why I became more passionate about this and getting out there, because I didn't find this shit out until I was in my 30s. Hmm. And I was like, yo, this is like important. Like, and I'm an educator, I'm in schools. I'm like, why are we not teaching this to kids in school? Like, why do I have to find out about this in my 30s? Most people get interested in this when they're hitting crossroads in their life, like hmm. when their backs up against the wall and exploring new, new ideas. But like, this is fundamental to like who we are and how we got here. And I didn't know that stuff. And as an educator, I thought it was important to get it out there. Right. So like with that said, that's how, you know, that's the basis of like the arrival of mushrooms to this planet and over the periods of time where earth has gone through several destructions right. and then you know whether it's meteorite impacts floods like all the time the pope boys to clean up shop of the fungi the mushrooms, the mushrooms and when it there, when yeah. life kicks start again they're the first guys to pop up again and just kind of get the ball rolling so they're the soil creators they facilitate and make the soil work and if anybody knows just a little bit about soil just know that everything comes out of soil bro the food that we eat. We know how important plants are, our relationship with plants. If we don't breathe, we're not here in it, let alone food. So mushrooms are the internet in the soil that make all that happen. They are the intelligence behind all of that. So to go back to that original point you made, bro, just as far as like how early, how far back can we take people utilizing psychedelic mushrooms? It's been suggested there's a hypothesis that's put out there called the stone date hypothesis. I read about that. All right. So what's being suggested- For people who don't know what that is, explain what that is. Yeah, you've got to do your Googles because I'm going to explain, but it's always important to do your I'm going to say Googles that right at the beginning as well. Yeah, 100% right? like whatever it is that you hear today, I'll say it again. Whatever it is that you hear today, make sure you do your own Googles and your own research and whatever. Like don't automatically believe stuff. Yeah, yeah. I ain't Just, about, and that's yeah. one thing I represent. I'm not about believers. I'm all about knowing and educating right. people so that they know you don't have to believe. You can believe anything, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The two fairy father, Christmas, you name it. But there's enough information and knowledge out there where you can know stuff. Because when you know, then it, it removes room for doubt. Right. And if you remove the doubt and you move forward, you're going to be moving forward with action and intent. And that's not many of us are moving like that in the here and now. Right. So with that said, just as far as, you know, um, the stone tape hypothesis or the stone tape theory, it's been suggested, it was proposed by Terence McKenna. So people can do their research, a guy called Terence McKenna. He's also no longer here, as well as his brother, Dennis. They hypothesized that early primates, so like what we could say is advanced primates who were in one point of time in Africa, in the Sahara region, basically came down from the savant came down from the canopies and eventually started hunt became becoming hunter gatherers during a period of time of hunting and gathering you know whatever you're hunting and gathering for you know what i'm saying somewhere down the line they encountered magic mushrooms those first beings to have encountered magic mushrooms it suggested that at very low dosages of mushrooms and the research suggests this as well like the current research is saying this is the case at very low dosage of mushrooms it heightens your senses mm. so what it's going to do is allow you to see better hear better, feel, you know, just be more in tune with yourself. So as a hunter-gatherer, someone who's going out hunting, you don't know, jaguars or, you know, like trying to find things, it heightens your sense. Basically, it gives you your night vision, it gives you night goggles, bro. You know what I'm saying? Turn into Terminator. You can see, feel things that generally you wouldn't be able to see because your senses are not as heightened as they are. So what that gave those early primates was an advantage over their counterparts. Mm. 
So if me and you are going out and we're trying to find stuff in the dark and I've got my night vision on, bro, I'm going to be able to find more things than you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So this is what's being suggested, that those beings who first encountered these psilocybin mushrooms were basically had an advantage on their counterparts and became the lead, the leaders of the species who then well, later became... Did they, was, it, was it the Homo erectus or something you go, like that? There you go. Yeah, who yeah. then later becomes Homo sapiens sapiens, who right. suggested we are. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. You know, the only thing where I personally beg to differ, bro, is like for some reason or another, as you know, history suggests that anytime you go back to Africa early days, it's all this kind of monkey talk, ape talk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but some people would probably rebuke that. Like yeah. They don't really love the idea of that. At all. I hear that. I hear that for sure. What I will say, there's some truth to it. That's in my humble opinion, there's some truth to it. But if you go back. Well, what do you think? What I think is that we were here even before that, bro. Like I said, like according to what our ancestors have recorded. As not a sapien, as like, as a... Yeah, man, like, if we, are we going there? Like, as gods, that. bro, as gods, man. Them man are saying, like, they were a big part of making all of this happen. Like, we've been here, we, like, we were just part of a, like, a lost legacy kind of thing, mm. man, of, like, a, a, so, all right, if we're going there, we're going there. They talk about, in mythologies, in the original creation stories, about the gods in the biblical sense, because most people are familiar with the biblical sense, you've got a... You've got the gods who created like a new species. That's the biblical version of it. They were known as the Elohim, and they were also known as the Anunnaki yeah, from yeah. the from the Sumerian Babylonian perspective. There's yeah. many perspectives: a Hindu perspective, an African perspective. But because most people come from that biblical perspective, that's the one that you know most people are privy to. So they it's suggested in the mythology that when the Anunnaki arrived to this realm, to this planet, there was a species already evolved, already happening. There was something going on here. These were your so-called pig me people these are the people that i'm about would, would have introduced you to as far as the first people to ever take psychedelics because they were here that there's they it suggested that there's some species who evolved with the earth who came out of the soil some came out of the water same some came out of the soil then there were these species that came from other places and spaces and then there was a load of mixing and interbreeding coming on and later on you got us popping up homo right, sapiens right, sapiens right. you know what i'm saying so when it comes to the you know the um stone date theory or hypothesis what i'm saying is according to the original people because I, I have this saying where i say it's time for the lion to tell its own story the hunter has been telling our story for way too long bro so when you hear our story our perspective we say that no like we came before earth bro <laughs> like we was around before even earth was created perfect example being the zulu many people have heard of the zulu tribe you know of from course. southern africa in their own narrative they say that they came to our planet by way of mars you know what I'm saying? This is not what Darren's saying. It's mm. not like this is what the tribes say. This, this is part of their teachings, like what they teach their children. That yo, before we came to Earth, we was on Mars, and before we was on Mars, we was in a whole other solar system. You know what I'm saying? And we've made our way to this planet. Again, it sounds far fetched, even me. <coughs> still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's Beyond. hard. I think do you know what, but like obviously without sidetracking or anything, that that's the only part for me where I find it like hard to connect to, like not just like to anything. Mm -hmm. because because I'm like I'm trying to find my way in life anyway yeah? mm -hmm. I'm always trying to do I'm always trying to seek knowledge and all these type of things but I think it's always difficult for me when I hear something that was told or something that happened so long ago there you go. and knowing that like you know what like if I if I tell him something yeah and then he goes and tells someone else something. By the time it gets mm. to the third person, no, you, it's not even where it's supposed to be at. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, imagine yeah. now, or oh, a million years later now, this whole thing, it's gone through so many different types of minds and different types of personalities and people mm -hmm. with different types of agendas and all these types of things. That's the part where it's like, I find it so difficult to connect Totally, to man. that, do you, do, you, do you understand what no, I'm saying? Totally, yeah, man. I feel you. I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, yeah, I, yeah. as much as I'm into what I'm into, I'm a researcher. I critique everything, bro. Right. Like, I look at the polar opposites of whatever I might be into. I'm looking to see what the haters are saying. Yes, I do that as well. Because oh, I do that as well. Yeah, you, you understand? Because like, I have to. Like, I, I don't want to get caught up in you know, no bandooly business. Like, no, exactly. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. The opposite. Yeah. And then from there, like, yeah, you get a better, better balance and perspective. And also, it helps to confirm your belief as well. There you go. It's, it helps shape your belief, confirm your belief, and understand things yeah, yeah. in a certain type of way. As so well. on that point, we're like over millions of years, obviously, like as I said earlier on, like it's got us to a point in stage where like most of us are believing now. But I can assure you, this experience that you know I'm trying to educate people around actually curates what we call direct experience, where you don't need to believe. So when I'm saying that, for example, say, oh, we came from here or this happened, we believe this. This isn't coming just out of like a one man telling man to believe something. This is coming out of, if this is our village, 
we're all partaking in these substances, bro. This is a this is a rites of passage. This is your birthright. You're not going through puberty without having this experience. And what that's going to allow you to do is know yourself. Mm. And once you know yourself and then you know these experiences, it's not your mum or dad telling you to believe in something. You've experienced it. And if we've all had the experience, that's like our reference point for moving forward as a unit. How do you know when you know yourself? Well, again, it's all, it all varies. In the here and now, that's like difficult and challenging because like there's the school, the narrative is for us to be distracted from wanting to know yourself. But some of us are born with it, with that interest, with those curiosities. Some of us, you know, we, we're inspired to. And ultimately you have to, what you, what I've realized for myself, I can speak for, I'm an ongoing creation. Mm. Uh, there's no ultimate place or position that I'm, I need to be. Like I'm a, I'm a piece of art. I mean, you know, like a, a painting, you know, like you can always add to it and tweak it. And you know, it's, oh, it's, it's in the lens of the artist itself. Mm. So as far as like you knowing yourself, you're creating yourself like, Ultimately, for me, it's like, how comfortable do you feel in your skin, man? Mm. <laughs> for me, that's what it's about. Like, I hear that. It's like, in this day and age, if you feel uncomfortable being in your own skin, like you don't know yourself. There's innit? a disconnect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you should work on that. There's different ways of working on that. And, you know, yeah, I'm not here to tell you how to work on it, but I can share with you some options, some alternatives. These are like ways and approaches to you discovering yourself. We'll get and, like, to that. Just go for what feels right, you know what I'm we'll saying? We'll get to that. Um, let's go back to the stone ape very quickly. Yeah? Mm, mm. Like, so when I was doing some research on that, it was saying that it suggests that um, it's like the key understanding. No, it's the key to understanding the evolution of human consciousness and um, where it may lay in the consumption of psychedelics, right? Mm. And like, for me, it sort of speaks to like, because you, when you was talking about the heighten of um, like seeing things, for example, mm. like, and what it, that sort of does, yeah. For me, that kind of speaks to what I, I always say, where when we're not there, are we seeing what we're actually really seeing? Like, and when we are over there, like see like when we are in that heightened part mm, of consciousness, mm, mm, mm. is that what's actually really around? <laughs> yeah, but then yeah. when I look at like evolution, for example, yeah, like, how does that contribute to, like, evolution? Because isn't that a direct experience that I can't pass down to somebody else? Does that make sense? If I'm if I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. experiencing something with, for, for a mushroom or for whatever, mm. which, whatever external factor it is, yeah? Mm. And these are all of the things that I'm seeing. And this is the experience that I'm experiencing. Yeah, yeah. I can't necessarily pass that down through within my DNA. So then how does that oh, contribute towards... I beg to differ now, bro. You okay, know what I'm saying? Go. Science is saying, suggesting otherwise. Go. It's something that's known as epigenetics. Right. EPI genetics. Go Google that, man. Do people do your research? They're, they're sharing you things like, this is how we inherit trauma. Right. You know, so everybody's aware of the whole kind of trauma discussions that are taking place. People want to deal with trauma and stuff like that. So what's being suggested is that our parents generationally pass on their trauma to yeah. family members. Mm. It's no different where, so, well, you can also then pass on positive things. You can pass on anything. So for example, say if your mum was scared of dogs, growing up and then grow, she can pass that on to you where you end up being scared of dogs and you don't even know why you're scared of dogs. Mm. So these things can be passed on and we've got to just understand that there was a time, bro, when we would intentionally pass things on. I mean, I was sharing this yesterday, like in one of my classes, you know, just as far as like, how we bring children into the world now is like, boy, man, just have a you in it, man, just having a you. Like, but there was a time when we would actually call on children. It's like, right, we need a, we need a, a new a bricklayer. Let's say, all the bricklayers are no longer here. We need a bricklayer. Like, you two need to go and conceive a child so we can bring more bricklayers. Right. You know, there was an intention behind it, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then you would get the right parents. You know what I'm saying? Together. That's like arranged marriages, so to speak, these kind of ideas to bring in those energies, these archetypes, these children. And you would want to pass that on. You would want your child to have the building, the brick laying skills and qualities. And that's like consciously we would want to part. Yeah, that's how we would approach it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, man, like we're going to pass on the knowledge and information that's inside of me, inside the, into my you. It's no different, bro. Like, yeah, if we're going there, we're going there, innit? Inside the sperm is information and data, bro. Mm. It's like a USB chip, you know what I'm saying? It's a data chip. And same with the egg. It's got information and data there. And when you bring that together, that gets passed on, that gets in, downloaded into the you that, that, that comes through. So there's people who do this type of stuff intentionally, bro. Not like just like how we have just, yeah, the man's got a you coming through, innit? Like, that's it. But you could actually say, 
I'm bringing a youth <laughs> through to this planet, you know what I'm saying, to do A, B and C and make sure that you do the best in having yourself in a position to be able to pass that information on. So yeah. these are practices that people do deal with. So on that note, and epigenetic science is saying, yeah, that really is a thing now. You know? right, but they're right. only focusing it on from the trauma perspective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do you know what? That's, as soon as you said that straight away, I was like, yeah, because I, I heard that, I hear that a lot in like the trauma being passed down. And when you was talking mm. about, um, when you was talking about like the the intention of like how, how people were having children and stuff, I think I was probably just learning that from more of a negative perspective mm. because I you would hear like in slavery days and stuff like that, they would make this person um, have a child with this one so they could have like a bigger, stronger yeah, 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 person yeah, or whatever yeah, it may yeah, be, yeah. or you know, they, you know, when they were getting them to do fighting or whatever it, whether it be in the garden, whatever it may be, but they were like mm. make, pairing people that yeah, they felt yeah. would be would make the the best sure. cub, so to speak, so that yeah, they could yeah. go and do whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, how did, over time, from your perspective, how did that, like, the evolution of psychedelics change? Because in the okay. beginning, obviously, there would have been, as you were talking about, like, you know, it was used for, to heighten your experiences or your senses or okay. whatever it is, or to have you know, maybe even one over your, an op, mm, yeah? yeah? Like over time, and I know you've talked, you're you're doing like talks on this where you're going through like a um, a journey of like the evolution of like mm, psychedelics. Mm, so how mm. did that, how has it, like, how has it, how do I explain it? Like, how does it, how has it evolved? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So even just to pick up from where we left off with those first people who would have encountered the psilocybin mushroom right. as hunter gatherers, what we what what what's already clear? History suggests that these people are called, referred to as pastoralists, right. and what that means is they've worked with the pastures, the grass, and how they worked with the grass was that they followed the cattle. They were cattle cults, cattle societies, cow societies, bull societies. It's really important to understand that these are actually like the first agriculturalists, and actually this is where we get the first religions from. Like religion is birthed out of like people understanding nature. You know, before God, you know, and some of these other concepts that we've got, it was just based on our immediate environment. They deified the energies that, are, you know, that were around them. So when it came to the cattle, the cows in particular, these cows eat grass. Mm. They move on to new pastures. So that would let that we learn a lot through nature and through the animals. We still do what we should still do anyway. But as they followed the cattle onto new pastures, because they're going to take them to where the, the new fields are, where the, you know, where, new, where the potential new harvest are coming in. And what happens when cows eat grass, they also take a shit. And when cows take a shit, for some reason or another, Mushroom magic mushrooms food. tend to grow on those, right. on those cow pies, as we refer to it. <coughs> Why so, is that though? Because... Basically, like it's got the key ingredients and the nutrients, right? Humidity and moisture for those guys to thrive. <coughs> but with that said, there's a whole, yeah, I don't want to keep drifting, okay, man. There's a whole yeah. mythology associated with that. But just physically, just on the, in the physical dimension, in the, you know, on earth, these people as hunter gatherers, somewhere down the line would have gathered these mushrooms. They follow the cows everywhere. Wherever the cows go, they're there. So now that they've followed the cows, they've partaken in this psilocybin mushroom, I guess they've tried other mushrooms, it's an assumption, but there's thousands of mushrooms that they could have tried. But I guess when you've had that mushroom, you're not gonna forget about it. Right. You understand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the fact that they've had that mushroom, yeah. this is where down in cultures and civilizations, hundreds of years later, you get this whole notion of cow cults or cow societies. Um, even sayings like, holy cow, the sacred cow, this is where it all comes from, bro. Like, again, it's like in popular culture. But these people, and still to this day, you've got an Eastern African societies, all like Sudan, Ethiopia, you've got a range of different cow societies. You can go to the Americas. That's where we get the original cowboys from. Not all that movie stuff, but the true cowboys and cowgirls were the gatekeepers for the cows. They took care of the cows because they considered the cows sacred. Not because, you know, it provided milk and meat and manure like many other animals do. Oh, the mushroom. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's where we get some of the first ideas of sp developing spiritual systems, religions down the line. And, you know, it's suggested again that, you know, all religions were birthed out of this stuff, man. And, you know, I do a whole series called Psychedelics and Religions where we look at the three main religions and look at all of the, you know, phenomena that takes place within religion, the miracles and things like that. And you won't be too far removed when you do your research that psychedelics play, play, play a big part in it. 
So then as far as, you know, their origins, the history, it eventually just migrated as those people migrated and traveled around. I've got to give it to you, man. So those people are, they have names. You can go and research them and find out who they are. You've got two main groups in Africa. You've got the ones in Central Africa. They're so-called pygmies. That's what they're generally called. They're little small people, three to four foot high, natural, that's their natural stature. But they go by the names of the Aka, the Baka, the booty, the twa. That's just the name of few. AKA the Aka. B A K A. The Baka. The Aka and the Baka. The booty. That's M B U T I. And you have the twa. T W A. That's a few to do your Googles. And I'm here to share with you. What was the last one, sorry? The twa. T W A. So these are indigenous. These are the first, the oldest people that we know. Science. Everybody else says that these are the oldest people that we know on planet Earth. When I was a you, I wanted to know if this Adam and Eve stuff was real, bro. So my first research was like, can I find the first people, the original people? I know they say, oh, we all come from Africa, but where? Africa's a large place, like what people, who? So that's what my research led me to, these groups here. And were they, like what, you, oh my God, my head's spun. So do you know the difference between these people? Like what, what how did they differ? So there's slight variation, like from the untrained eye, like even me, you could group them all together. That's what Europeans done. They group them all together. These are just these small people that their genes, even research, the, the genetics, they're saying that their genes are so diverse, are so different from the rest of human population. They don't know where they're from. Right. That's what science is saying. But if you hear what they're saying, they're saying, yeah, bro, like we came out of the waters. We came like this. Is the, we came from other places and spaces. So this is why it's like, again, it's like in this, in the here and now, you've got to kind of believe or maybe listen to what they're saying, dive into the places where they're saying they came from through taking, partaking and stuff. And you would have the experience and be like, all right, these guys are on the money. But the point I'm making, so I'm not drifting. You've got these two main groups. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that you find in Central Western Africa, so-called pygmy groups. The, the difference between them ultimately is just ge 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 geography. Right. You know what I'm saying? The main thing. Obviously, there's variations in the blood that runs through their vein. But we're talking about the earliest people that we know on planet Earth. You find another group that are in the southern regions. They're commonly called the Bushmen. But their, their actual names that they refer to themselves are the Khoi and the San. And they put them together and they refer to them as the Khoisan. These two distinct groups, bro, there's nobody on planet Earth that are older than these groups. Sci they say it, their own narrative, and science also suggests it as well. And these are the first people to ever partake in this stuff. Right. These are the first people then to migrate, leave the continent of Africa, and start populating other places around the world. My primarily went from there to Asia, you know, and then Asia onwards and moved to other places. And wherever they went, they took their culture with them. And their culture had mushrooms and other psychedelics were a big part of their cultures and traditions. And then you find out that this becomes part and parcel of like various mystery systems later to become secret societies and fraternities and stuff like that, that most people today, they hear about the Illuminati and mm. Skull and Bones and Freemasonry and stuff like that. Again, if you follow all that, I'm a man, I like to go to Source Bro, so if you follow all of that back, it's gonna take you back to Africa. It's gonna take you back to these first people <laughs> who created these societies and civilizations who later on down the line, it gets all distorted because the Europeans started doing all like their colonizing thing that they were on in it. And uh, they distorted the knowledge and information that yeah, I was gonna say, is that, bringing. Did, is that like, did that become infiltrated then? Oh yeah. But then I, I'm also here to say as well, to keep it real, that it was infiltrated even way before, before Europeans. That. Yeah, there was like, we, like Kalindi always taught, like the priesthood became corrupt. There was a time, so going back to that, stone date hypothesis the whole idea was that there was the mushrooms were growing everywhere everybody had access we're going back so far that when the sahara desert was a green lush rainforest it's taken thousands of years for it to become the desert area that it now is today so over that time of the land drying up mushrooms became more scarce so what happened was rather than everybody being able to access we started appointing certain people to be the ones to go in these become the first priests who then go into these realms and come back and download and share it with the congregation. So this goes back to now where we get, we have to start believing. We've got to believe what this man's saying. Mm. And somewhere down the line, you know human beings, man, somewhere down the line, like we just became more corrupt and started manipulating the power that we have. So where I could take mushrooms, you could take it, he, she, everybody's taking it. And you'd be like, yo, did you see, just like them boys that used to go down Hampstead Heath, mm. you'd be like, bro, did you see the aliens come through yesterday? And if we all saw it, bro, that's not a belief thing. We saw the aliens that came down on a spaceship and they came and blessed the circle, whatever it may be. But now, if none of us are taking it and we've got to have one person coming through and tell you that. And tell, we've got to believe. And that person somewhere down the line might say, yeah, 
Remember the, the you know the, the the gods that we used to hang out with out, out, out on the other side. Well, I went over there yesterday, and what he said is that you need to give me your wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want your your children are <laughs> going to become the cleaners. But wait, like, you know so wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that somebody kicked, like this is the infiltration part? This is the infiltration. Oh part, yeah, yeah, within yeah. the priesthoods. That's what we say. Like the right. priesthoods became corrupt. You know what I'm saying? That's just man individuals manipulating the power, the control that they have. Right. And then later on, that skip becomes more widespread. And then you have, you know, these societies, man, these fraternities that didn't want the masses having this knowledge and information. So they kept it within their certain schools of thought and you had to be initiated to get that knowledge and information. And then this is what you're getting over years, you know, hundreds of years later, man like me and you don't really know what's going on. Like we're not privy to this stuff. It's only a certain elite or elect that are familiar with this stuff, but they've kept it in our culture, kept it in society, right in your face, but you just don't know it. So. Okay, fast forwarding then. Is there a is there a chance that we're misusing? Is there a chance that we're misusing what psychedelics? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Like in that sense, because obviously the purity was from a certain place and done under a certain understanding. Yeah. yeah. But now it's not really done with that same type of understanding. Oh, so obviously naturally because most people just don't know. They just know it exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But they don't they don't know. Which I guess like kind of leads to, you know, I always hear some people that like are like, advocates of this thing where it's like, they say, if you are doing this, understand why you mm. want to do it as opposed mm. to just doing it. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, again, you've, you've, you know, you've, you sparked a few things there, but ultimately if we, you know, psychedelics are a tool, bro. They're a tool, a technology, a tool. That's how I refer to it as an organic technology. And it's like any tool, bro, a hammer. You know what we can do with a hammer, innit? Man can build a yard, bruv. Man can build a ship, build boats. But I can also lick you over the head with a hammer. Yeah, of course. And it's not the tool that's bad, negative. It's what is your intention in it? What's your motives behind it? So as far as can they be used? Can psychedelics be used? Like I said, I came in this school for, by way of Kalindi E. And when he taught us, he taught us about the warrior's path. He talked about, you know, martial arts and fighting and self-defense being a big component of the psychedelic space. He would also talk about the ancients using this for warfare. Well, how, all... how is, can, like, let me just go with martial arts quickly. Yeah, yeah. Like, how is that connected? All I can say, bro, is there's files. Like, <coughs> I, I, the, the, the simplest ways in, in iCloud, we all know iCloud, yeah? We refer to this as like the realm of where all information and data consciousness is stored. Some people refer to it as the collective consciousness. Everyone that's ever been here and had an experience, you've got your experiences, but it's in iCloud, it's in this collective consciousness. And we can all pull and download from there. So there's certain files, let's say, there's certain files that are martial arts files, are warfare files, mm. because they're, this was happening, or it's been happening before Earth, according to what our ancestors say. If we have mm. African heritage, we're saying that, yo, we were coming from other spaces and places, and there was warfare, there was peace, there's this, like, all things were happening in the same way that they, they happened down there. And we can pull on those files. And what, when we pulled down on those files, what we learned it from ultimately was the animals. Because when you start seeing all the original fighting styles, they're just how the animals fight. Right. That's like in the martial arts when you say tiger style, monkey style. Watch monkeys when they're having it off. Like, bro, it's like, their man are doing judo. Their man are doing jujitsu. You know what I'm saying? That's, what, that's where we, like, it's not. So between mm. our experiences, our spiritual experiences and observing nature, which is one in the same, that's how we develop these various fighting techniques and meditation techniques and you name it like, and they go kind of hand in hand. Right. How, is there any um, like African tribes right now that are like, that really immerse themselves in this type of psychedelic today? Oh yeah, yeah man, yeah man. So those same, this is the, this is the crazy thing that what I've un uncovered. I ask, know? it sounds, it might sound like a stupid question, but it's like, I don't, it's not something that we talk about. Like, that's what do you I'm get saying, what I'm saying? Bro. That's, yeah, that's why we got to do, that's why I'm happy to be here and we're doing yeah, this yeah. in that way because like, right, when I'm fighting up, what I realise is that I'm interested in this stuff. So I'm that idiot that's going to pick up the books, <laughs> going to yeah. dive in and, you know, check it out. But if you're not interested in this stuff, you're not knowing about it. Like, how the hell are you going to know, innit? And then what I discovered in my own research was that, right, those same people that I mentioned, Adam and Eve, the very first people, bro, they didn't stop doing this. This is what they do and they're still here living and breathing they're not no group that's vanished and mysteriously gone somewhere and you know you can't find them no more bro you can go to the congo right now and them man are there right now doing this thing 
This is what they do. Right. You can go to all the play, all the people. I'm talking the Zulu. They man do this thing. The Maasai tribe. They do this. All the tribes that you might have heard of, of you know, distinct African tribes, bro. They do this, man. This is what they do. Especially the ones that have rites of passages in place where there's a warfare, a warrior element to it. Right. Because that's how we approach this thing. Like it's gonna give you some nuts. It's gonna make you a man. And what it's gonna give you is some direction where you don't start banging on each other. Okay. You're gonna be banging for the village. Okay. And when you're banging for the village, you're not banging on the next village for no reason. The village, when you're banging for the village, you're banging because there might be lions coming in. Yeah. There might be giraffes there, yeah, yeah. and, Eradic and like, eradicating a threat. Yeah, yeah. And like we need man to be on point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what this can support you with. You're not going to be banging on each other and destroying your own village and burning down your own village. So that's a big part of the rights of passage. All, all these different tribes, bro, and like what they do and how they've been doing it still to this day. <laughs> to this day. You would like just mention Adam and Evia. So what is there some is there some light this might sound blasphemous for some people but Ooh. is there some light feeling there that it wasn't the apple that got ate Talk it was a man. mushroom what, what are you asking what are you, trying to, <laughs> what are you suggesting you know what I'm saying is, that what, is this what like is this that so let's go there innit like if we start with popular culture to go back perfect example being I was sharing it with the guy, guys yesterday I was in Liverpool and we was doing this session and I was like we all know it it's hidden in plain sight it's on the iPhone what's the iPhone logo apple. what's the apple logo mm. it's not just the apple it's the apple bitten all day alright so we all know that's connected to Eve yeah mm. that's all the biblical stuff but if we stick with just in the modern era Steve Jobs yeah was that the guy who came up with the apple stuff and all that type mm. of stuff yeah am I correct yeah right. alright so it's known within that school of thought that when they started to create apple back in the 70s and 80s or wherever it was his collective were not allowed to be part of the apple team unless they had a psychedelic experience serious you can again people go do your googles man do your googles do the research he was like you can't be part of my team if you ain't done psychedelics main reason being that if you ain't done psychedelics you're still in the box mate i need some kind of free thinking out of the box kind of people and my team need to consist of a caliber of people that are not stuck in the box right. so that's you know partly in part of like it being hidden in plain sight in modern culture right yeah so that's the apple the eve if we go back to the whole notion of what eve or that mythology is about and what steve jobs is saying is basically like you're going to get access to knowledge and information that you wouldn't have if you're not partaking in this stuff they refer to it as the forbidden fruit We're not i don't want to get too much in the mythology but you know the forbidden fruit it was forbidden by who why but when you get into it, it was like well, who was it forbidden by then if that is the case because if that if <laughs> if sorry i know i'm going now, no, yeah, but, go it. but yeah, it's go like on. but it's like if that is supposed to be almost like an, a, a spiritual awakening or a, or a, a, or an enhancement of something Mm. then how could that be a negative? I know, I know, because it depends who's telling you the story, innit? Like, it depends who's giving you the thing. And I don't want to, I don't want to get into the whole biblical thing, but God was the one it was suggested saying like, yo, don't eat the fruit, innit? You're in the paradise, you can do everything, but just don't eat off this thing here. Yeah, yeah? don't yam yeah, that. Right. And then, certain man come along. And said, yo, <laughs> yo. And to this day, what my teachers told me is that that man who came and done the whispering, he didn't tell no lie, you know? He didn't tell a lie. But the person who's they're saying told the, did the whispering is the devil. Yeah. And but the saying. person, the devil, <laughs> told the truth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is what throws the whole, you know what I'm saying? And now you're going to lose followers, so am I. Yeah, you know they're going to be, gonna, they're gonna gonna be like, what's that? this guy talking about? But that's only because we've been giving it from that biblical perspective. Okay. If you go back to source, right? yeah, what you're going to find out is those in the, we, I have to give the reference then, innit? So that biblical perspective, the English Bible that we have is coming from Hebrew texts, yeah? Jewish texts, yeah? And that Hebrew text come from ancient Babylon or Mesopotamia, ultimately Sumeria, Suma. So I want people to do the research and know that we're not trying to get people out here, you know, devil worshiping and no, stuff like that. Because that's just like, you just said at the beginning, you had this conversation with the girl about good and bad. Right. Yeah, and I don't know what the outcome of that conversation was, but ultimately- The outcome you of it is she just didn't really know really what was right and what was wrong. Right, and then what you do realize, if you explore that impact, it's like right and wrong. It's like, there is no right and wrong. It's just like perspectives and polarities. It's like hot and cold, mm -hmm. left and right. If you turn right three times, you've gone left. Mm -hmm. if you go, it's, like, it's like, this is the kind of matrix that we're in. So I'm saying that to say, when you go back to the source text, it's known as the Enuma Elish. I spell it E N U M A. Enuma Elish, E L I S H. That is the original text that the Bible gets all its text from. So people are going to do their research. But then when you get into that text, it's not God and the devil, it's two brothers. And they got a beef. <laughs> and in that text, man, is, there's one man who's kind of pro humans and another one of them who's not feeling humans. 
Right. And later on, it becomes God and the devil. But again, I don't want to lose people and drift off the, you know, the main subject. So going back to it, when one of the brothers who was interested in human affairs, because this other deity or Anunnaki who didn't want humans evolving, he was like, bro, we need to cut them off. We can't have them as smart and intelligent as us, this new species. And then there's another guy, they refer to him as Enki. He was like, yo, I got you man's back. And he was the whisperer who whispered in Eve's ear to say, yo, these men are trying to hold you man back and I got your back. Right take this thing and you're going to have the same kind of knowledge that we have. You're going to wake up. Yeah, and she did according to the mythology. And then again, we talk about these trees, the holy trees, like I do a whole series on, you know, because you can do the research, man. Like you can buy biblical encyclopedias and it will break down like what the actual tree is. You said there's a brother here called Moses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the Bible, he was speaking to a burning bush mm -hmm. and got revelations and inspiration. If you buy a Bible, biblical encyclopedias, it will tell you what that bush is. Right. It's the acacia bush, it's the acacia tree. A-C-A-C-I-A, -A -A, acacia. For, for those of us who are familiar with acacia trees know that acacias contain DMT. Interesting. All of these sacred trees or holy trees that are mentioned in the Bible, the Quran and the Torah are all psychedelic, bro. Like it's well documented. Even in the good old church where we have frankincense and people are familiar with frankincense being down the church, that's a psychoactive, bro. But a lot of this stuff, like I said, has kind of been swept under the rug. So. I don't know where I'm going with all of yeah, that, but yeah. just to let you know that going back to Eve and all of these trees and substances that people partake in, it's not hard to find out that they were psychedelics. Like right. scholars are saying it, biblical scholars, Jewish scholars, Islamic scholars are now coming out saying, yeah, we know what this is, man. And we can actually bring it back to the way that it really was. Not everybody's co-signing this thing, but I'm talking about the That's scholars, cool. bro. The scholars are saying this stuff, man. Not just the everyday Tom, Dick and Harry who's passionate about their religion, but isn't well versed in what this stuff is. The people who are well versed, they know what it is, bro. This is really interesting to me. Um, I, I wanna, I wanna fast forward a little bit then. Um, there's just been a lot of conversations I've noticed recently about shrooms. And maybe it might just be because I'm asking a lot more questions and I'm just seeing more things. But interestingly enough, like I went on Twitter just today before mm. I got here, and I just typed it in just to see like what people were saying. And the amount of people, if you just go on Twitter, and you just type in shrooms, yeah, yeah. you'll just see like loads of people saying, I want to try shrooms, I want to try them, yeah, 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 yeah, try them yeah, or, yeah. or like th they might just be talking about their experiences of, of them. You've like, light, you've sort of like gone through a light history of them. But what I do want to try and understand is, there's like so many different types of there's so many different types of them, right? Mm. What are like the prominent mushrooms? What do they do? Like, how do they differ? Okay. So if we're talking about mushrooms in particular, I'm going to put them into two categories and to make it easy for those viewers who might be watching, let's call it just the bloods and crips, yeah? Okay. You've got the blue mushroom and the red mushroom. That's also corresponds with priesthoods that later came out that represent the two distinguishing mushrooms. The main one that most people make reference to when they talk about magic mushrooms is the psilocybin containing mushroom, yeah. the blue mushroom. That's what most people generally call magic mushrooms. That's the cubensis strain of mushroom. It grows all over the world and... If it grows in Mexico, they would call it the Mexican cubensis. If it grows, you know, in Colombia, it's the Colombian cubensis. Same mushroom, just growing in different places. The active ingredient in there is <coughs> psilocybin. There's probably about another 16 to 20 known psilocybin mushrooms that grow all around the world. We've got some that grow naturally here in the UK, you know what I'm saying? You've got the wavy cat mushrooms, which are cyanensis mushrooms. And then we've also got what's really popular in the UK, historically, one that's known as the liberty cap. Again, so these are all psilocybin containing mushrooms. And psilocybin, just so for people are aware, this is the active ingredient, the chemical in mushrooms, which is very closely related to chemistry that you've got inside you naturally. So we're not talking about drugs. This is like, again, like to just not to drift, but because a lot of people say, ah, oh, you know, you're promoting drugs. You know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, the narrative that we've been given, yeah, it comes in that category of drugs, but we're talking about chemicals. If we start breaking stuff down and all these things that we generally consider as drugs have got chemicals in them. Some of them are natural, yeah. For the most part, most of them are all natural, but most of them are not necessarily natural to the human body. So perfect example, like alcohol, that's not natural to the human body. Our body rejects alcohol, but you know how we do alcohol, innit? Like, it's, mm. it's like that's, 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 that's easy, innit? So there's other, like even cannabis, for example, marijuana, there's, for some reason or another, there's receptors in our brain <laughs> that receive the cannabis as that come off cannabis. So either or, we've evolved to receive this stuff, 
or we was naturally designed to receive this stuff. It's brain chemistry. Right. And the same goes with the psilocybin. Psilocybin, DMT are very much closely related to serotonin. They're like a few molecules different between serotonin, melatonin, ultimately what we call like melanin in the skin. They're all very much closely related. So these are chemicals that what we could say are heightened when certain things happening in the human experience without taking mushrooms, they happen when you have an orgasm. It's right, been suggested, course, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? When you're dreaming, when you're lucid dreaming, when you're having these kind of altered states of consciousness experiences, they say that your DMT, your melatonin, serotonin, that is, we're in that space and place. So that's what these psychoactive psilocybin in the mushrooms support. There's a bit more science to it than that because it's psilocybin. Once you take, once you ingest it, it knocks off one of the oxygen molecules. It turns into psilocin, and that's then what gives you the hallucinogenic experience when you start seeing things. But again, we're not seeing things that are not there. You're just you're you're getting a lens on things that are there that you just don't don't normally get to see. Right. So that's one type of mushroom, and then the other one, the red one, just to, in a nutshell, is the probably the most famous if not first, second mushroom on planet Earth right now. And that's that mushroom that if you type mushroom on your phone, is gonna pop up the red one, the Amanita muscaria, AKA fly agaric mushroom. You type in mushroom, it pops up. And then I always say AKA the Smurfs mushroom. The Smurf, of AKA course. Alice in Wonderland mushroom. AKA the Christmas mushroom. Yes, yeah, actually it's mad when you deep it. The mushroom has always just been there. This is what I'm trying to say, bro. Like, we, I could do this all day now, man. Like we could, we could do this all day. Like in a sense where like it's been hidden in plain, in plain sight. sight in popular culture yeah, that's then when we check Mario and what, what, what Mario's all about what Mario's all about bro like all these platform games I come from that classic era of like Double Dragon Shinobi and right, all them right. there. the classic arcade game bro is based on real life man and if we go back to the original ones those Nintendos and Mario and it's like you eat the mushroom bro <laughs> yeah and you go through life, oh, you go through the yeah, levels of life. What you do, yeah. You go course. through the levels of life, and what we could say the metaphor would be at the end of each level, there's a boss in it that you need to defeat. That boss is like a trauma, mm. an ego, an aspect of yourself that you need to defeat. And once you get through it, you move to the next level. You remove a layer, and as you get to the, you move and progress through the thing, man, you just get better at knowing who you are and what your powers are all these kind of things there and then man who make all the computer games they all know all this stuff as well most of the things in the movies you'll find out bro Stan Lee all the movie guys all these man take psychedelics bro the musicians like when I started unpacking I was like bro man's just kind of been <laughs> like <laughs> separated from this team but it's like it's right there mm. it's right there again I'm drifting but it all lines up because I mentioned Stan Lee and the comic guys because they made m the most recent one that everyone's tapped into or hollers me about is Black Panther because you know, our people tapped into that. But if you remember the very first Black Panther, when the hero T'Challa, he's got to go and do the, he's on the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, he's got to take this flower. Yes. He takes the flower, then what happens? He goes into this ancestral room, he meets his ancestors mm -hmm. and they give him knowledge and information so that he can return back, resurrect or rise again to become the hero and to go complete the mission. Like that's what psychedelics are about, bro. In the here and now, many people in this current narrative are talking about it being used for therapeutic purposes, medicine, right. therapy, PTSD, anxiety, depression. Again, that's cool because we need that in our community. We have those challenges. But again, that's not how I was taught about this stuff. That's why I said I don't refer to it as plant medicine because it's fungi, one, so it's not just plants. But even if we are talking about the plants, the people who this stuff was gifted to going back thousands of years, they're not using it for anxiety, depression, and PTSD and stuff like that. They're using it, they say, to connect with their ancestors. Right. That's what they use it for. It's modern technology, bro. It's like, we don't know where we're going in life. Man feel confident to ju jump on Google Maps, innit? Like I had to find where I'm going here today. I was confident going on Google Maps and saying, yo, it's gonna bring me to West London and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it here. There was a time when we believed in ourselves and our ancestors that when we got those downloads, we could tap in and they say, yo, there's gonna be a drought here. You might need to go east. That's where the next water's gonna be. And we would believe because we knew we had had those experiences. And that's a big part of the missing link in the here and now. But it's given to us in the movies, in the computer games and all of that That's like of stuff. a super heightened level of consciousness, isn't it? Or no? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But that's like, that's like our birthright, bro. That's what, I, that's what I've come to understand this stuff. It's not even something like, ah, oh, like, you know, people will say, and I get it, like, you've got to be careful, you need to be conscious of what you're doing, and you do. But I'm here to share with you today, bro, that there's no culture in the world that deals with this stuff that don't introduce this to you as a child. 
Mm. We're not waiting till you're in your 30s and 40s having a midlife crisis, wondering what the purpose of life is, what you're here for, your backers up against the wall, you're in a shitty job, you've got these kids driving you crazy, mm. you're pulling your hair out, and then somebody says, oh, do you know that you could do microdosing and that can help you with... Boom, and that's how many people are stepping into this space and like learning about it. And that's cool, but like I said, there's a big gap when it comes to you really uncovering, unpacking who you are because you've lived a life of not knowing... Well, what is the biggest misconception when it comes to it then? So for me, ultimately, that it's a tool of navigation. It's a tool that allows you to go inside your mind, inside your psyche, inside your mental. Now, what that ultimately means, according to like ancient Egypt, they'd say they have this um, um, principle, which is called, you know, the hermetic principles they're known as. As above, so below. As within, so without. There's these kind of like metaphors, let's say, yeah. But what they talk about is that you know, all of the knowledge and information that is, you know, as, as that's been passed on, you know, it's kind of been processed and everybody's got access to it. And your mind, yeah, is the all. Your mind is the universe. So if you take psychedelics, you get access to the universe. Your own mind is the universe. Now, again, it's to some people's like, wow, what do you mean? It's like, this is why certain indigenous shamans, for lack of a better term, because shaman's a term that comes from certain parts of the world, but you know, these plant medicine men, yeah, just easy. That's why their man can live under a tree, bro. And their man have traveled the universe and you think, right, you've never left this tree, bro. How you know so much knowledge and information? Because they've developed the ability to go inside their mind. And your mind, if you understand that your mind is mental, the mental is all, and the all is the universe, you can navigate the universe through your mind. Mm. that's like for me that's the powerful thing man like and that's the teachings that most of these tribes talk about they say yo it's a tool for navigation it's GPS yeah it's a GPS device and it also allows us to communicate with our ancestors the unseen realm and that's really important to all these cultures because your ancestors have had the physical experience they've had the human experience now they're on the other side they can pull from other places and spaces and can give you files that can help you in the here and now and because the ancestors, according to their own heart system, they talk about a creator God and, you know, a most high. But God, the most high, is so far, he's so remote that we don't necessarily have access to him. In some cases, he doesn't hear us. In some cases, he's not even interested in what we're doing down here. He's moved on. He's building other places and spaces. But because our ancestors have had this legacy of being on earth, their best place for us to pick up the phone. You know it, bro. If I'm, when I'm overseas, the first thing I'm doing, I'm picking up the phone, I'm calling my family. I'm like, yo, I made it safe. I'm over here. Boom, boom, boom. It's in the same way, it's an organic version, organic technology that you can tap in and communicate with your ancestors as well as people in the here and now. That's why they created all these devices, bro, like as alternatives to us having those abilities. And those abilities we would have called, I don't know, telepathy, intuition, even vibes. You might say, yo, man's got the vibe, man's got a certain feed, isn't it? That's the technology that I'm talking about, that is your power. Those are your powers. But, you know, rather than most of us like bypass our vibes, isn't it? Like, oh, my, I felt this, but I still went and done mm. <laughs> such and such. And I knew better. It's that. Just imagine when you was a child, eight, nine, you was taught how to believe in that and know that, like not to doubt yourself. Mm. So when that vibe arises, you go with it. And because it's co-signed by the rest of the village, like, why are you going to, you're not going to doubt, you're going yeah, to be, you have confidence in that, man. I think you also as well, it's like, uh, in interestingly enough, it's like, I do feel like we're probably leaning a lot more to just doubt in general and I think that like we you know I've always said that I don't know what our purest self is I don't know what that looks like mm -hmm. but I do feel like we're just getting further and further away from it in in our like just our normal everyday lives we're just getting further yeah, and further yeah, away yeah, from yeah, yeah. that what our purest self actually is or what it's supposed to look like you get oh, me? I feel you man and I, again like I say I don't know what that meant what that looks like you know what yeah. I'm saying either but what I do know for sure is that we're co-creating the future like we're all part of what is to come like we're all going to play a part in that so for me I kind of use the past to reflect on you know what worked what's not working pull from that what makes sense, what's tangible for me, and then utilize that to create something. And like, I would like to think in the here and now, those of us that, perfect example, those of us coming from the street life, innit? We come from the street life, and some of us got into what we was going to make quick money to do certain things, yeah? Whatever whatever reason we got into it, but like, a decade later, a few decades later, you see that, boy, man didn't get all the pee, <laughs> all the yeah, up, yeah. or those that did, there was a very few that got all the way through, because for the most part, man just ended up dead, going jail, boom, boom, boom. So I'm learning from that to know that, that's a big part of how we've got to where we are at today and how can we use that to create a future for ourselves 
that's better than the last in it. Mm. And like that applies and you can apply that to any and everything in it, like religion, spirituality, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that we're all co-creating this future that is yet to exist, like I think it's exciting times, mm. you know? And, and with that said, because I'm aware of and I'm making it privy to like my bridges, like I'm talking about man them bro, like not just the doctors and scientists, I'm just talking about the everyday man them are tapping into this stuff and we're breaking our curses. Mm. We're breaking those narratives that made us scared, feel a way about certain things and now we've removed doubt bro and now I've got brothers who believe in themselves not because they're tough not because they're prepared to pick up a shank and you know like that kind of bravado we're talking about just within yourself you know who you are you feel comfortable in your own skin I heard you when you was at the, the JME thing and like man, I was like boy man shook in it I like, said like, I'm pussy yeah that was it and it's I love that bro because I'm, the thing um, is you know what like I'm curious isn't it mm, mm, I am mm, mm, but mm. I'm a curious person anyway yeah, 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 I'm yeah, yeah. pussy because I just think, listen, yeah. Oh, you know. Well, actually, did, I, I'm not, sorry if anyone's heard this already, yeah. But I always refer to this a lot. Like, one time I had a weed cake. My brother gave me a weed cake and didn't tell me it was a weed cake, mm. yeah. And it was a super, super strong weed cake. And I don't smoke, yeah. yeah? yeah. But I hadn't smoked for years, mm. yeah. So, you know, that went straight in my bloodstream and licked off my head to bits, <laughs> yeah. Now, when, we, when I had it... Um, I was on my way to, to, to a booking. I was DJing at a club and whatnot. And then when we've come back now, like we're just dying of laughter in the whip. Just mm. dying, bro. Yeah. Tears are coming down my eyes, yeah. And as the tears are coming down my eyes and I'm laughing, I'm like, nah, that wasn't that funny. So I'm tapping him. I'm saying to him, brother, nah, there was something in them cakes. Because I just yeah, knew yeah, 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 this, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. this is not even funny. <laughs> yeah. But also to add more context here, I was going through a bad stage in my life. I was just going through a bad period. So I wasn't in a good mind frame. Mm, mm, mm. So anyway, now I started, bare things that happening to me. I just started seeing things, feeling things. And like, it was just a really negative experience. But gotcha. weird things were happening. So for example, I'd be standing on, a, I jumped out of the car on the motorway because right. I was driving my whip. So I've, but I've jumped out of the car. I need whatever it is in on me. Yeah, I need it off yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm standing on the side of the road. As I'm standing on the side of the road, I'm looking and I can see, you see like, obviously there's more cars going down the motorway. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing like feet under the car, like Flintstones. Yeah. yeah. Now I could look at that and I could laugh. Yeah, but yeah, in my yeah. mind, do you know how mad, like, like no matter how much people tell me that it wasn't there, I can see it. Go, I can bro. see the feet yeah, yeah. underneath. Each yeah, yeah. car's going by, I can yeah, see the feet, yeah, whatnot. Yeah. But also, not only was it these type of things happening, but I was seeing different colors that were associated to feeling. So for example, I'd see orange that made me really paranoid. Like, so it'd be like an orange tint, or I'd see like blue and it would make me feel like I wanted to have sex. And then, or I'd see red and it made me just angry. Mm. Like I couldn't mm, really speak mm, or whatever. Mm. My hands turned in, shrinked. This one turned into a flipping, yeah, into yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Um, a lizard, but I, like, in, I own bro, a gecko in it. So that was all part of my consciousness, I think. But, so all of these things were happening, yeah? And it's always made me think that was a bad experience. It was a weed cake. I didn't know what I was doing or whatever. What is it like when I'm in a better space? I know what I'm doing, but I'm, I lean to the mushroom. What happens? And what, yeah. so there's, that, do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying because it was so bad, yeah, yeah. because it was so bad, there is a part of me that's like, well, what happens under a controlled environment when I know what, I'm doing and also this thing that is supposed to be like quite a natural thing as well. So subconsciously, you know, bro, it's going to be all right. <laughs> like it's going to be all right. But it's all those narrative, all those experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. that cloud, cloud the judgment. So going back to that original statement and you and Jamie chopping it up, bro, when I tell you, I've heard that from every man's mouth, including mm. my own. When I first stepped in this space, bro, as much as I've done, been through street stuff, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah, lead yeah, up to yeah. it's like, boy, I'm actually going to do this now, yeah? Like yeah. boom, nerves, anxiety. Right. But what I've come to realise, that's, that's all part of the natural process then that all part of the natural journey in this space because you are stepping into the unknown yeah you're stepping into something you've never done before yeah and every time you step into it, even if you've done it 20 times bro it's never the same right. so there's always an element of like anxiety nervousness which ultimately then you can transfer and just to respect that i'm just going to respect this thing and know that it comes because yeah. i always say i'll give the statement of you know what mushrooms have done for me it's light on my load that's the first thing that i really appreciate for it's light on my load but it's put me in the mirror threw me on the ground, lifted me up, spun me around, put me back in the mirror and allowed me to appreciate the good, the bad and the beautiful ugly inside of myself. Tell me your first experience. 
So ironically, my first experiences weren't with mushrooms. It was, I, I was del delving into other things. So my first breakthroughs came with salvia, something called salvia divinorum, which was legal at that time in the UK. So that's what I was trying to get, you know, the, the legal side of things and I tried DMT. So then by the time I got to mushrooms, I kind of felt, and I was told by my teachers like, rah, you're kind of gonna kind of be ready for mushrooms because the way salvia and DMT work, they move, they more can move really quick. So with mushrooms, my first experience, I won't say it wasn't all that, but it was just like, oh, I realized what Kalindi was saying was right. I need to take more. So I need to increase my dose. So it took me a few times of doing mushrooms to find my dose that gets the wheels turning. And that's what's different. There's not a dose. There's not a thing that everybody could take. It's not a pill where like, if you take it, I'll take it, everyone takes it. We're all gonna have the same experience. Everyone's dosage is different. And you've really, in this day and age, if you're going down that path, you've got to kind of be like, as Kalindi would say, Dr. Strange in this thing, man. You've got to kind of experiment on yourself. But because we know mushrooms are the safest recreational drug full stop, I'm not talking about psychedelics, full stop. Safer than coffee, safer than tobacco. Like there's trials and studies have been done. Like that in itself should remove the fear of you physically doing anything wrong to you when you take it. So these were the processes that I was going through and just working out what I'm doing, how I'm going about doing it. And by the time I increased my dosage, I had to get to a certain point where I went past the feeling. So the first level of mushrooms is it's heightened your senses. So you're gonna see sharper, you're gonna hear things. I could hear people down the street, bro. You know, I've got, I'm in my flat and I can hear a man walking down the street talking. It sounds like they're right outside. But when I look outside, they're man are way down the street. <laughs> and I know normally I can't hear that far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are the first things like, wow, this thing really works like that, innit? So again, but that's not the be all and end of what mushrooms have to offer. That's like what we call, call hunter's dose. If I was out there trying to hunt deers and stuff, I could hear them walking in, you know, in the bush and I could, without having to see them, that's where that type of stuff comes into play. But after a few times and increasing my dosage, I went beyond just the senses you know went past the sacred geometry stuff and the, the rules melting and stuff like that to be just being pulled into other realms man other places and spaces that i just never would have thought existed in it mm -hmm. but they do exist they are there you can access them you can go back again you can learn from there bring back here what you've learned and vice versa as i said as above so below as within so without so me personally i don't like to tell a lot of my experiences because it can distort other people's yes, experiences 100%. yeah and also you obviously you, you can go into it thinking that you're going to experience what there you, you go. experienced it yeah. sets people up for false expectations right. so like it took me a while to get to that point to get the courage you know what i'm saying to build up and then go back yeah, i then, mean i'm if i'm gonna do something like that i'm nibbling on it first there you go a young you know what i'm saying a young at the bottom and that's me. <laughs> and everybody should do what they feel comfortable with. Right, exactly. And then what's going to happen is, what like what you've done is like what all my other people, my brothers have said is like, they come out and like, no, nah, next time I need to do more. Yeah, like, all right, yeah. it's not as bad as I thought it was. And I'm like, cool, man. Like, we sat there for six hours for you to work that one out. But yeah. when you're ready again, we can do that. Is this but illegal, by the way? All right, so yeah, it's definitely illegal in the United Kingdom. Right. Yeah. The trials are being done. There's a lot of research being done that they're trying to declassify it and stuff like that. What do that, you think but, about that? It's a long subject. <laughs> it's a long subject to get into, but like I think that anything growing from the earth that is natural, considered good or bad, any anybody and everybody's got the right to access it. That's how I personally feel. I also feel there's something that was referred to as cognitive liberty. Everybody's got the right to explore their own mind. As long as I'm not hurting or affecting anybody else, I should be allowed to work myself out. And that's what these things do. So the fact that it's illegal, you should ask why is it illegal? Like who made it illegal? Why is it illegal? What is their what is their reasoning behind it? And does it make any sense to you? Mm. And it doesn't make any sense to me personally, like in all honesty. I get what they're saying when you look at the controlling narrative, but the fact that, you know, like as far as like it's for safe, safety, it's safety, you know. But they've done the research, bro. You can people do the research. Dr. Professor Nutt, Dr. David. Professor Nutt, he was commissioned by the government to do all the classifying of drugs, yeah? So, you know, like at, the, at that time, there was a time in like the early 2000s when it was like, cannabis was like class C, they put it to class B. And you know, they was determining like, oh, like how deadly, how dangerous is this thing? So they called him in, they're like, you're the man who knows all this type of stuff. Do your, do your Googles in it, work it out, come back and tell us, you know, what's safe and rank them all. So first and foremost, Mushrooms is at the bottom of the list, bro. Their man are getting regulated, re um, relegated this season. You know what I'm saying? Their man are getting, they're at the bottom of the league, bruv. Meaning they're the most safest 
recreational substance that you could take lower than coffee, lower than tobacco, lower than the alcohol and all the things that are commonly readily available and are legal. But in this questioning with Professor Nutt, they was talking about cannabis, like, well, I'll go on for cannabis. Like, you've done the research. This was on like, it was on like GMTV or one of their morning programs there. And they said to him, Dr. Professor Nutt, what's the most dangerous thing you found out about cannabis? Do you want to know what his reply was? Go. The most dangerous thing I found out about cannabis is that you can have a, you can get a criminal record for being in possession of it. Wow. He got fired. Government says, yeah, man, you, that's too loose talk, in it? Like, you can't be putting it out there. Now, David, now I'm going to be with him in a few weeks, you know, at a conference that we're all doing. He's now out there and is an, is an advocate for psychedelics and drugs in general that we shouldn't be going to jail for this stuff. Mm. We shouldn't be going to prison because they're less harmful. The ones that, you know, the, we're not talking about the opiate drugs. They're slightly mm. different, cocaine and hair and all that. But we're talking about what I'm talking about, these so-called psychoactives that are actually brain chemistry. They are naturally, <laughs> these chemicals are naturally in you. He's saying that we've done the research. We looked at the impact that it has on the individual taking it. Not only that, but also the butterfly effect. Example being, if I drink alcohol, it's doing damage to me, in it? Like I might have a good time, but ultimately it's doing damage to me. But then if I jump in my car, and I start driving, I might lick somebody down. There's like also the butterfly effect. Mm. So they went through all the levels of how drugs impact individuals as well as society, bro. I keep saying mushrooms are at the bottom, bro. You can't physically take enough mushrooms that can cause you any physical harm. Really? It's physically impossible. You need to eat like two, three times your body weight, which is physically impossible. It can be, and it should be mentally challenging. Because you're going to, it's gonna challenge your mental. Yeah, I was gonna say for sure. Could, could, I was gonna say, could it not blow your like? Couldn't it blow off your some type of part of your brain? Like I don't know. Obviously, not your consciousness, but it can. If you get to, if you are like so in heightened, mm -hmm. surely that can't be necessarily great for the mind, right? Ultimately, what happens is, regardless, even if you go super infinitely out there, you come back and you're back in the room and you're Darren again, bro. No, I hear that. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to take that knowledge and information, make as much sense of it as you can. If, but if obviously you can. the danger is, is that if you do that, you might be running around all over the place. Next minute, you might just get run over by a bus. That's why you if you're up. new to this, you wouldn't be doing it by yourself. You'd have right. somebody there okay. to support you. You yeah. do that several times. You would take your load dose, increase it, you know. All right, so let me educate people, because it, it would be, a, I'll be doing it a disservice if we didn't do this. So going back to your homies that gave you the cake, yeah? yeah. And like, man, just like random don't know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not what we're doing in no, this that's space irresponsible. and place. Right, so it's about people being really responsible with this stuff. There's something called set and setting. It's really important. So it's about you knowing what you're about to get into, doing your research, just knowing what you're getting into, what it's about. Not necessarily hearing people's experiences, but just knowing what you're getting into. Then set and setting is about you having your mindset in a certain place. So you not knowing that you was about to take the thing is not having your mindset prepared. So you need to be like, yeah, I'm gonna take you these mushrooms. I, like, I know why I'm doing it. I know, you know, I've heard, done my research and I feel comfortable about doing what I'm doing. And then the setting is the environment making sure that you're in the right environment. So it's not like, yo, we're just driving around, we're at a festival, we're just doing any random thing. You're meant to create an environment that's conducive to you in this experience and whatever your intentions are. Now, when you bring those factors into the mold, you're very much more likely to have a positive experience than if you're just at a festival and someone says, yeah, try this, try that. You've been drinking, popping pills. Like that's how many people have their first experiences. Then they might have a challenging experience. They'd be like, right, I ain't messing with mushrooms again. That shit just messed with me. But that mushroom was probably mixed with alcohol, pills, like I'm not in the right set and set in all of those factors, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you're coming from a traditional, you know, responsible perspective, it's set up so that you are, you're not in control because you're never in control really, but you're setting up the environment. No different from setting up Today, you know what I'm saying? You're setting up the mic, you're setting up the equipment just to get the best result possibly. But as you know, man, the wire might come out and I might lose some sound, like things happen, innit? Shit What's happens, happened? like, yeah, they, it's like real life. But the, the best you can do is prepare it as best as you can. Mm. And that's what we talk about. And ultimately having an intention, like, why are you doing this? Mm. Like, if you're doing it because your mate done it, that's not why, <laughs> like, I've met people like that. It's like, yeah, my friend, they went what to the Amazon. What is a why? Like you've, only you will really know and can answer that question. But for me, like it, I, want, I, I wanted to explore myself, bro. Like I was coming from that perspective. Like enough people come for healing. They hear, they hear about the medicine side of things and they want to sort out their m medical 
approach, you know, and perspective to it. So whether it's mental health, depression, whatever, I think those are valid reasons to get into it. So for me, that wasn't my interest in this. Mine was like, basically, I want to meet the ancestors, bro. Kalindi said this to me. He come to my yard. He saw all my books. I got a bag load of books in it. I see your little book collection. Well, not your I little book it, collection, yeah. but I yeah, see yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I started. To, yo, I'm not gonna. So we crossed. There's a few books there that I've got, okay. and I was like, yeah, man, I feel a feel in your work still. But anyway, so when he come to the yard, he see the books. He's like, yo, you got enough books on the gods and stuff. And he looked at me. He goes. You can keep reading about the gods or you can hang with the gods. He goes, what do you want to do? Bro, I want to hang with the gods. Right. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yeah, this is what this stuff is going to allow you to be in those realms where the gods, who we were called the gods or the angels, whatever you believe in, yeah. that's, that's where they are. And that's when people say, you know, would always ask him and you, you share it with me. You'd be like, people say, so when you take mushrooms and this stuff, are you going to see beings? Are you going to see aliens? Are you going to see this or see that? And he goes, that's like saying, if I go swimming in the ocean, am I going to see fish? He goes, yeah, you're going to see beings and stuff because that's where they live. You're going to the place where they exist, where they come from. So there's all those elements and being prepared, having the knowledge and knowing that that's what you could potentially get into. Why I'm saying that it's important because some people get in it too, from the medicine perspective. So they're like, yo, I just want to sort out my anxiety. So they're microdosing just, and they feel good for it. They feel better for it. Then they increase their dose. Then they have a spiritual experience that they're not necessarily prepared for because nobody's really schooled them into like, yo, this thing actually can get really deep. This is some matrix shit, man. This is red pill, blue pill type stuff. Mm. It can really go that deep. You know what I'm saying? And if you thought that it's just, oh, I'm popping a pill to feel good today, to feel good for the week, there's a lot more to it than that. And that's what I think is important to make sure there's a balanced perspective. And currently in the, you know, with all the research and the trials and stuff like that, it's just like one dimensional. And that's because the West is sick. Europeans, European culture, and the byproducts of that is messed up, it's ill. And that's why that's the narrative of how we can utilize this stuff. But if you go to these other places where they've been using it for hundreds, if not thousands of years, mm. it's a preventative measure, bro. You, we was taught prevention is better than cure. Mm. So their man don't have anxiety, they don't have depression, they're not using it for alcohol recovery and stuff like that. And that's why I, I was like, so what did their man use it for? Because right. if in the Congo, they're not using it for heroin addiction. No. That's one of the things like, because they don't have heroin, like what do they use it for? And they say this, we use it to communicate with our ancestors. It's our, it's our iPhone, bro. Their man laugh at some of the things that we do, like as far as the technology, like a TV. You we think, oh, their man don't have TV, they don't have phones. Their man are late in it. No, bro, they got it. Their man have got TV, you know? More time, yeah. <laughs> their man have got phones, time, yeah, but it's just time, not in the way. Like, more time, they've got it, some, well, in certain aspects anyway, like, they've got it more figured out than us because we put, we place so much of what, of our value in those things, like in this. Like literally, yeah, 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 we yeah. put a lot about. If we, if you lose your phone straight away, you feel collapse, like yeah, everything yeah. stops or what? Check that out. You don't have a TV. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. like, oh my god, like my life. So I, I can't even watch. I can't watch Netflix. Like, we, and then also other external factors like clothes and whatever. And it's like you go to some of these other places, and their mindset is completely different. But their perspective on what makes them happy, or what they're around, is also completely different too. But we look at that as less than. And bro, what's really deep about it, as you're saying, it's coming to mind. Like we said at the beginning, just you know, that the forbidden fruit, the iPhone thing, yeah? What makes that iPhone work, bro, and the technology that makes it really run and operate is liquid crystal technology. Them same diamonds that they're taking from the Congo, yeah, all that yeah, type of, of stuff yeah, there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From the, and that same place is where them same little people that I've talked about come mm. from, yeah? It's the same place, the source, you know? It's a source of life. Mm. Their man are pulling from that, but what they're pulling from the soil to create this technology is already inside us naturally. We have liquid crystal technology inside of us. That's what these indigenous cultures utilize to do all their kind of work and communication, which religion and people later on say, oh, that's juju, that's black magic, that's all obby. They've got all these names for it now and it's been distorted. But when we're talking about what they're doing, the abilities that they have, that liquid crystal technology that's in these phones and stuff is inside of us. It's in the blood. There's crystals in the blood, bro. It's like, that's where your ancestors are. That's your that's where the information and data that can take you back to the beginning of time is stored. And these men know about it. You know, the indigenous people and the powers that be. So when we're going back to that question, cause I didn't really answer it just as far as like, why have they made this stuff illegal? And why don't we don't get access? Cause maybe because people know the power that it will give people once they get access to it. And they don't want those people having that type of power. And what they've done during that time, once they locked off people from using this stuff, they went behind the scenes and was using it. Again, people can go and do the research, man. You can go on YouTube right now and type like psychedelic experiments with the soldiers. Press enter and see what comes back. Both the US and the UK governments were doing trials with LSD, mushrooms and stuff with the soldiers. 
military because they wanted to create super soldiers using psychedelics. I heard about that. Where did they get inspired to do that? Well, that was when the British first went into Africa and they went up against the Zulu, the same Zulu man I was telling you about earlier on. And the Zulus, when they went up against them, the Zulus just had sticks, stones, spears and shields. And then man defeated the British on the first round. Then the British had to come back and <laughs> they armoured up in it and came back and done their thing. So they had to explore. How comes when we went in the first time, their man just had sticks and stones and stuff and they whooped our ass? Well, then man teach and share now what they were. And they talk about having these snuffs, packs, these concoctions that they used to snort which they said had high levels of THC, as well as muscamol, which is an active ingredient in the red mushroom, which actually we call the Black Panther mushroom. Because when you go back to that Black Panther movie and the stuff, it's all connected, bro. But yeah, these man rarely do this stuff. Right. So when they took the stuff, it creates the warriors. So when their man went, the British went and saw their man, then they got their ass kicked and they're like, yo, we need to take that back that, and we're going right. to create our own soldiers. But when you see the trials, when they done it with the soldiers in America and the UK, nah, I don't go on like that. <laughs> because these men were born into this. It right. was their birthright. You man just got your random soldiers and tried to feed them this stuff. And when they done it, them soldiers were just giggling, laughing, yeah, 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 climbing yeah. the trees <laughs> and stuff. Them man, they want a right They're so passage. far behind it, like of where I hear it still. Yo, yeah. and that's really important. So when people are sometimes they ask, so why do you think they pulled it? Like just a certain amount to catch up. Yeah. Certain amount to catch up in it. Because yeah. a certain amount is what they've been doing. A certain man says, yo, we need to tell the world, allow it. And yeah, what we can now do is like catch up, catch, catch up with the rest of them. And Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot there still, man. I'm going to listen to this back. I can't lie. Um, you talk a bit about like how this could help community. Mm. Expand on that a little bit. It's as simple as this for me, yeah. When I had my first experiences and had my true breakthroughs, bro, my load was lightened. What I realised that I was carrying so much baggage around that didn't serve me well, man. Thoughts, narratives, some of them I inherited, some of them were self-created, but they didn't serve me well. After my first few experiences, well, my first real experience, but after it's like, bro, I'm just, man, starting to feel free, bro. This is freeing me up. This is like this is like putting that internal smile back on because I'd gone through like I've just gone through my shit in life you know what I'm saying and like it was like this really is doing the thing that I thought it was gonna do but I didn't get into it for that I got into it to navigate and learn and hang with the gods in it I went to hang with the gods but while I'm in there it's doing some other work on me and I realized that I needed to do that work and soon as I came out that other end I was like my family need this you know I knew straight away my family needed it. Whether they was co-signing or not was another thing. And straight away I know that the brethren, my brethren need this. Like we all need this. So this is going back 15 years, bro. Nobody was interested. I was presenting it and people were like, nah, I'm not on it, not feeling it. Be careful, make sure you know what you're getting into. Slowly but surely, what I've realized is that just being a walking example, before I did try to shove it down people's throats. I'm like, yo, like, uh, I was on it. But after I realized, just let people in their own time, innit? Slowly but surely, bro, all my people are coming through. All of my people from family to brethren, even enemies, bro, are coming through saying, yo, I see the ting, I see you're on this ting, let me check it out. I could give you names, but people in the public space, grime artists, rappers that you're all familiar with that holler me in it. From the moment saying, yo, I just don't pull it out in the public in it, but yeah, boom, yeah, like, I feel you, I know yeah, what, yeah, yeah, I yeah, I know what you're doing, like big up yourself mm. for being out there and all the rest of it. So I'm saying all that to say that, bro, I just knew from day one that mm. it would help, it, it helped me. It could help my family. It could help my brethren. That means it can help any and everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's just the butterfly effect. So if I feel good, my house is going to feel good. Then I, my neighbours are going to be like, well, go on, how come you're just all feeling blessed and everything? I'll be like, yo, this is why I feel blessed. I can make my street feel blessed. You know what I'm saying? And then we've got this whole thing. Like, There's a collective of us. I've got people. Like, It's an international thing now, bro. But you know, I bring it back to the ends. It's called Heed in the Hood, bro. I'm, I felt that the work that I've been doing over the years has always been like community-based work. Like I've got a background in the community. Not everybody knows me for the different things that I do, but I've always worked in the community pretty much when I left the streets to do like productive things, you know, music, filmmaking, just always been involved in, in stuff. And then um, for me, it was just a matter of like just spreading that knowledge and information. How can I go about doing it? I want to go back to move forward. I share this with you because basically I've done a project called Making Ends Meet. This is back in 2000, 2008. It was a music and film project. I was working primarily in Hackney. I was working all their man them in Hackney doing music, yeah? All the people that, you know, Mashtown, L-O-R-D, you know what I'm saying? All them man that are in Hackney. <coughs> We've done this compilation thing. The idea was to bring man together to make financial ends meet and make the ends meet. Yeah, if you make sense. Yeah, it's called making ends meet. That's what it was just. And That's at the cold name still. Yeah, and at the time, man were telling me it couldn't be done. Like the people that I was working with were telling me, yo, these man have got beef, they're rivals, boom, boom, boom. Me as an older, me as a neutral, 
I felt comfortable to go in and say, yo, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to break bread, creativity, boom, boom, boom. A man co-signed it and got everybody together. All I'm trying to say is in that principle of mine has never ended. I've like I've always felt like, yo, man, I just wanna like me and my bridge, like we got too much bull, too much beef, too much squabbles, too much that going on. And I've been there and done that. I've had, you know, yeah, I've just been there and done that, innit? Not to a deep level, not going like man was an OG out here on the game, like, like just enough to see and witness enough to know that this ain't the way. Mm. This ain't this ain't getting us nowhere. Like, and if we're doing this to make bread, like it makes sense that we make bread to get like let's, let's break bread together, innit? Right, like right. and if we're trying to grow let's grow together if we're trying to learn let's learn together like it's better than man being isolated so if you fast track to the here and now bro this is like making ends meet through mushrooms it's the same principle like the point i'm making is that I, my goal was to bring all this stuff when i go to the conferences and the you know i do i'm in that space and place but i gotta bring this to the hood i gotta bring it to the ends and like for me that was the whole point and then once i started bringing it to the ends and there was people who like i said these i had man that were involved in that making ends meet project that was like 2007 2008 bro so we're going right. back over a decade you know what i'm saying and then man were like part and parcel of it observe what man was doing and then years later be like yo I, you was you was always on that weird stuff spring you was always on that like, <laughs> yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah we're seeing and feeling you and i'm right. just saying all that to say that I want to give you two testimonies, yeah, of oh. people that come from that school of thought. Man them, bro, man them. And on their very first sittings, like when I was with them in a safe space where it was legal, yeah, they've done their thing. So the first bridging of mine, man them proper fully, he was like, yo, bruv, this thing's trying to make me cry, isn't it? <laughs> man sitting, he's like, spring, this thing's trying to make me cry, bruv. <laughs> man, don't, not, I don't know why I'm feeling like this, but I just feel, and I had to sit there and I come through, I was like, bro, if it's making you feel like you want to cry, bro, just go ahead and let cry. that out. Yeah, yeah, just let it go, man. Boom. He released it, bro. 45 minutes, however long later, you come and he goes, bro, I've never felt this fucking peaceful. Like. He goes, the last time I felt this peaceful, I was 18 months years old. Mad. He was even then after, he was like, how the hell did you know 18 months? Because it took him to play. It, yeah. He had his experience. He came back and something happened at 18 months years old, I guess, that triggered Change, the lack that. of him having the right. peace that he was having in that moment. Mm -hmm. So that's just one way. Right? And I can tell you now, he's an advocate for this thing and he will be happy to come and show you. As a man, then, like, yo, I thought yeah. my brethren was on some banduli business, but right, yeah, right, he's got right. a co-sign and his stuff. And then, again, a female perspective, female doing live the road life and all the rest of it came back sit down she wanted to go through her stuff because she's been you know a lot of the females have inherited a lot of trauma as because their mothers have been through stuff and then they experience it on the streets bro you know how it is my man and grabbing them up feeding them up all these yeah, kind of, of as soon as you step on. even if you're not experiencing it at home sometimes the moment you step out into the community then you can you get it from it's there it's a lot yeah. i get it it's a lot like i don't yeah, it's a lot yeah. so i'm just saying that to say on her very first experience she's sitting down i'm in the other room it's it's my people so I don't normally sit with women anyway but yeah. she's done her thing and she come out and she looked at me she goes I'm upset with you and I was like oh shit oh well, go on and she's like why didn't you shove this down my throat uh, yeah. and I was like I was trying to man you know what I'm saying but everyone was hesitant innit everyone's so hesitant <laughs> and boom and if you caught me right at the beginning I was I was the pie piper but I was trying to get everybody on it but I realised nah that's not how I need to go about doing this I learnt through my own experiences and having certain challenges that this isn't for everybody everybody's not built for that so let me just wait to as and when people approach me or ask and I can point them in the right direction kind of thing right. so for me going back to that initial point what's the benefit what's the purpose and I just think like, bro, it can make the hood a better place, bro. And I don't know if, if man are happy with, with how the hood is, like the circle and cool in it, I like leave it alone. But if you know better, which I know for the most part, we all know better. Yeah. Most then like, are not. Th most this is a not. tangible alternative of to course. checking yourself and just checking our dynamics in it. That's all I'm trying yeah. to say. Enough people are like, I mean, you grow up, you grow up in a certain dynamic and for some it's just normal. And you, sometimes you hear like, like rappers, for example, the rappers actually make it out. When they make it out, they're like, wow. Like, I didn't see anything past the block. Mm, Do you get what mm, I'm saying? Mm, and to mm. them, it was so normal. And it's like, now when they go and experience a certain aspect of life, they don't even want to go back now yeah, because, yeah, yeah. you know, they've, they've said, they've, they've felt something different. Do you know what I mean? But I think that most people don't get that experience of doing it from that dynamic. They just stay in the hood and it's just, yeah, yeah, everything yeah, is yeah. normal to them. But I do think as well, there's like, there's so much trauma in it. You know, I hear you like jumping on the bus. They're going from like one ends to the next ends to go to school and that. But they've got to go through an ends where it's a bit techie. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, but they're yeah. on the, and it's like, 
it's so mad. I never, for me, I never had that experience. When mm-hmm. I went to school, I just went to school. I didn't have to think about, I'm jumping on a bus, I'm going to this yeah, next yeah, end, yeah, and it's yeah, going to be yeah, yeah, problems yeah, or whatever. Like, all of these things are just like so traumatic for them that, you know, you ask a lot of them. Most of even you start going and doing a madness to someone. They're not even doing it because they're just bad youths. They're just doing it because they're scared. Bro, they're doing it because they're thinking, you know what, I, it's better that I catch them before they catch me. Yeah, 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 Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Once people are free from that, if they can ever be free from that, oh my God. But And they can, that's the point. And like I'll start and say, yo, this is what this thing, this is what I'm trying to this is what I'm bringing yeah. this thing. I just in. don't think that I just don't think that I don't think in my own mind, I just don't think that a power at B wants it to be that way. Definitely not. This is why, you know, like I said, bro, like man standing on my square, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting my liberty, life on the line to put this out there because I could just stay in my yard, bro, and just keep this light and just take care of me and my people, innit? Mm. But I understand the value of what it's done for me. Right. And because I come from where I come from, experience what I've experienced, and especially because of these trials, what definitely got me to speak up about this more, bro, I'm going to these conferences and they've done these trials with soldiers, yeah? So again, I've got a background with young people in it. So primarily the so-called hard to reach, man who improves in it, pupil referral units, been kicked out of school, just come out of prison, all that. That's my background, like in educating. So I come from that, yeah? I come from that and that's who I educate. So when I'm in these conferences, these psychedelic conferences, and these men are talking about the trials that they've done with soldiers. We're talking about military soldiers, you know, not back in the days, man right now who signed up for war, they've gone, experienced whatever they've experienced. They come back, they're traumatized, shell shot. They've seen man get shot. They've held bodies, you know what I'm saying? Killed people, you know, all the rest of it. They've had all of these experiences. Then they come back to, you know, civilian lifestyle and their man have got PTSD in it. They done trials with these soldiers. They done them in the States. They also done it here in the UK with psilocybin, mushrooms, and MDMA. Everybody knows a bit of MDMA, yeah? So they done the trials with the soldiers, bro, who had PTSD, chronic PTSD. Let me ask you, guess, make an assumption of what percentage of soldiers benefited from the trials when it came to the PTSD. 20%. 20% benefited, you would feel, yeah? That would, be, would that be a call, mm. you know? 100%, bro. 67% it totally removed their PTSD, bro. You what? The remaining 30 whatever percent, it significantly reduced their PTSD. They was no longer dependent on their medicine and stuff that the NHS was supplying them. Bro, it blew the stuff out of the park, bro. What Everything that they've ever been trialing and doing. So when I'm seeing that, I'm like, hold on a minute. No disrespect to them soldiers, but they all signed up for this. They knew what they was getting into and they had the support and the help all the way through it. And they still had PTSD. And then they done the trials and it got removed after three sittings with this. So I'm sitting there saying, what about my soldiers on the street? Couldn't this work with my soldiers on the street? The guys that I work with that are shank man, seen man get shank, held body, shot man, all that. And then as you know, got to get up the next day, hit the block, just continue. And like you, you've carried, you store in data now. That's epigenetics, bro. You're going to pass that on to your children if you have children, man. If you don't handle that or deal with that, that gets passed on. So as I'm sitting there hearing these trials that they're doing, I'm like, yo, this is relevant to where I come from, bro. And the people that I deal with on a day-to-day base. But just like you were saying, it reminded me to say that you've got to know that you've got these things. You can't go to an AA meeting and not know that you're an alcoholic. You've got to know that you're an alcoholic. Go to the AA meeting to get the help and support. Right. Most of us, bro, don't even know we got PTSD. We don't even know we got... It's normal, bro. Like what the what lifestyle that we live, the stress that we live under and the pressures that we live, is normal. Man just say, bro, fix up in it. Come on, keep it moving. Those are the kind of things that we would hear when it comes to addressing our trauma and our issues. It's never been dealt with. And this can actually go, this goes back even further, bro, for over 500 plus years where people of color, of African descent, have had no support or no help with any of the trauma that we've been inflicted on going back to slavery times, bro. Mm. And this is a butterfly effect or a byproduct of why we're acting out the way we act out in the area mm. now. So yeah, we can actually start to address those things. That's why it's important for mothers, you know, people birthing the next generation, because we're just going to be passing it on. This epigenetic thing is a real thing. So we can go back, we can heal the soldiers, heal the hood. We can heal the mothers, you know what I'm saying? Evidence is there to suggest it is. If you're concerned or worried about breaking the law, because in the United Kingdom it's illegal, yeah. The Netherlands it's not. There's loopholes there. There's loopholes in parts of America. But even better yet, for those of us of African descent, by way of the Caribbean, you can go to Jamaica because in Jamaica there was never any laws to implement for it to be illegal so I've do, I'm doing a lot of work in Jamaica currently with communities out there doing some stuff we're healing the hood in Jamaica you know what I'm saying if we can heal the hood in Jamaica we can definitely heal the hood there man like you know what I'm saying <laughs> so with that said if o- over there there's um a lot of 
research being done a lot of you know lots lots of stuff is happening but the people who are benefiting that primarily are americans canadians and british and europeans who can afford seven to ten thousand dollars pounds a week to go and do these retreats and stuff once again my people can't afford seven to ten thousand pounds sparingly to go to do these retreats and stuff while at the same time all of the healing of the island and of the people is growing naturally under their feet Mm -hmm. and it's not illegal so the whole idea is that if you've got issues with legalities you can go back through the middle passage where we inherited our trauma through that portal at the other end and heal yourself. Well, what, could you not, is it like illegal in most of the con- African countries as well? No, no? It, it varies place to place. Okay. But again, it's just creating safe spaces for people and that are actually conducive to people like that look like me and you. Right. That's, just, that's just the reality of it. Like enough of these retreats that take place, they happen in the UK, there's Europeans doing this stuff illegally, you. you're underground. I'm saying, I'm saying to folks, well, look, I'm not encouraging anybody to break the law, in it. Like yeah. it's not about that. But what it is about is you sorting your shit out. Mm. And what I do know, if I keep it really real, bro, like I come from that background where myself and people that I know have broken the law before. You know what I'm saying? In all different reasons. And our intents, our reason behind it, that we how we justified it, bro, cannot compare to if, you know, the breaking of the law to ingest some psilocybin mushrooms. I know, man, that's still to this day, bro, I'm selling hard work. You know what I'm saying? They're selling hard work and like, man, are contemplating why they're doing it and you know, all the rest of it, but they do it. They justify it. So I'm saying that if you're prepared to do that, you're prepared to like roll with a knife and prepared to stab man, shoot man, like, wouldn't you be prepared to break the law and take magic mushrooms? Man bun weed every day, innit? Like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just talking about, like, let's keep it real. I know man that are 15 years old, they're buying alcohol, they're yeah. going in nightclubs. That's all that is breaking the law as well, innit? So I'm not, again, promoting people breaking the law, but I'm just saying that, man, I've been there and done it, innit? So yeah. for me, that's like the least of the things I would be worried about out of all the things I've done right. in my life and, you know, people that I'm around to be really concerned about. But I'm aware there are some people that, Ah, you know, clean, straight, and all the rest of it. And yo, maybe you need to go to the Netherlands. Maybe you need to go to Jamaica or go to somewhere in America. You know, to have that experience, to feel safe mm. and experience it in that way. And mm. like, there's options out there, man. But not everybody can fly in Netherlands and Jamaica and all the rest right. of it. So, like, what do you do in it? And like, you're just gonna have to make stand on your square and you know just make a decision for yourself and what you know what you're willing to do for your own sanity, for your own well being, for your self discovery. <laughs> what are you working on at the moment? Quite a few things, man. I said I wear many hats, but in this space, primarily, you Are know. Are you writing a book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me about that. Um, so I'm writing on, working on a few books. It's, they're all been long in the making, but the one more recent one that I've been focused on that, you know, I'm talking with publishers about and stuff is called You're a Mushroom Having a Human Experience. Oh, right. That's it, man. A bit like we've got the hoodies, the sweatshirts, the caps, is that everything. Hoodie, is, like, that a, a, is that one of your merch now? This is one of the merch, yeah, oh, man. Yeah, cool. man, yeah, man. I'm so we're going to get that. it. Uh, yeah, Skull Clan. So it just brings together the skulls and the mushrooms, which represent the ancestors are the skulls and the mushrooms are your connection to the ancestors. So we're just promoting organic technology this way. Right. But I've got the book series um, that I'm working on, which is, you know, a history around mushrooms. There's going to be a cultivation handbook. Then there's a larger one where we're working on like all that history, going back to the beginning, going back to when those spaceships arrived with those passengers (laughs) and bring you all the way. (laughs) I'm not going to lie, the spaceship (laughs) thing spun me, I can't lie. I know. But get the the science, don't you know, panspermia, there's, yeah, like hear that side of it too. But I've got like, for people that are interested in this stuff, like one, I've got a bag load of stuff like on YouTube that's just free, readily available. I do serious series of talks and workshops like webinars right yeah I do like around the country man like I I travel a lot but in the UK you can catch me in London once twice a week doing something I've just come back from Liverpool done a weekend in Liverpool you know I'm in Bristol Brighton all them you know just moving around Um, as far south as you know Brighton and up far as north as Scotland like we're doing stuff on our land mass but um, if you can't access that then there's a webinar series that I've got so I've got a couple bits that I do but the main one's called Psychedelics in Africa, The Untold Story, which is like six plus hours, nearly eight hours worth of content where I just, again, I take, I go back to them spaceships, man, and just bring you all the way through and just talk about how the ancestors spoke about it. But these spaceships are just asteroids, you know, if we break it down scientifically, how they created the soul, created these little people, you know what I'm saying, who later becomes in mythology, the leprechauns and the gnomes of mythology and, you know, the little pixies of, you know, the, of European culture. But ultimately, these are your little green men. I'm saying like when you see them in Egypt they're the little green men these are forces of nature so I'll just go through that whole journey and bring you to the here and now and then show you that if we come full circle we could drop this in London Hackney East End and like the same thing will support us in right. you know the same way it helped our ancestors you know right. the same way it's helping these tribes you know again I don't want to drift but it's really important for me to ex- explore the fact that like there are like you know like in, in, in these indigenous tribes there's like bad man 
There's warriors. There's men who are fighters, bro. Like, I'm not here because, like, this whole peace and love thing and love and light and bubbles and psychedelics, like, it's a narrative that, you know, may not resonate with a lot of the people mm -hmm. that, are, you know, that I, I like this, I would like for this message or delivering this message to. And it's really to understand that, you know, there's, there's a warrior in all of us, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this war, it's not necessarily about picking up a knife or a gun and gun, you know, doing anything to anybody, but like, just within yourself, that internal fight, that internal struggle that you wake up with every day and go through in some shape for another, it can really empower you to do something with that, like to defeat that and beat that. That's like, the Neo versus Mr. Smith, you know, the God versus the devil within yourself. And for me, that once you address that and deal with that, bro, you, I, I can't have a beef with you, man. Mm. You can't have a beef with the man. I'm like, it, it's it's just it's like non, yeah, it's it's, it's non-productive. It's mm. like non-productive anyway. But you get the insight into why it is. And I'm saying that to say that these ancient cultures and the modern ones, the Zulu man, bro, them man are fighters, bro. Them man are killers. But they just know how to direct their energy. Right. You understand? And for me, that's Oh, what... we definitely need that, by the way. I mean, I was wake I, I mean, I woke up the other day. I've been thinking this for ages anyway. I'm not and by the way, please don't miss don't like misinterpret what I'm saying for going outside and causing violence or whatnot. But I just saw uh, I said but but <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that like um, at some point in April, like all of these bills are going back up again, like the energy bills and whatever else, yeah. Mm. And I remember just thinking to myself that like, for me, I, I keep feeling like we're being pushed to our maximum. Like we're being pushed to our maximum. Mm. But for whatever reason, we just keep adjusting to that thing. Mm. So it's like, this thing happens, we moan about it for a little bit, but then we do nothing about there it. We just accept, we just roll over. Then they do it again and again and again and again. And just a couple of weeks ago, I noticed, and I'm, I'm, this is something that I'm talking about that I don't really know too much about, but I do know ultimately what was going on a little bit with it, where in France they were saying that they were going to put the pension up from, I think it was either 40, either you got from 64 to 66 or from 62 mm. to 64 and they went absolutely ballistic bro. Like that, they yeah, said yeah. you're gonna do what another two years they went outside yeah, and they yeah, yeah. they weren't Tunnel having that Tunnel but Tunnel. i just feel like i just feel like every time we're being told another thing another thing it's like we get upset but we just roll over we get upset and we just roll over and it's like maybe maybe middle england need a genuine awakening. Yeah, yeah. And some people are like fighting a fight that they feel is an important fight to them. But it's not an important fight. It's a misguided fight. Mm. <coughs> it's a misguided fight. If you understand and know how to channel that inner warrior within you, mm. you see when it comes to this, this is going up, this is going up, this is going up, yeah, this is going up, yeah. and we're looking at the greater good of our community, sure, sure. that can't happen. Because the most of us, the, the majority of us turn around and say, hold on, wait one second, we're all in line here, this is not right. And there's always power in the people, but mm -hmm. because they've, we've got to a point where we're so divided and they've got us so divided. So there's the left and then there's the right. Mm -hmm. And then in here, everyone's divided over yeah. here. And yeah. in here, everyone's yeah. divided yeah. over yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's even more divided in there, even more divided mm -hmm. in here, it's like, mm -hmm. We can't even come together at any point and have an actual, like, you know, fight for a, a cause together mm. because we're all f too I'm busy totally, fighting I'm amongst totally each brother. other. I'm Do you get totally, what I'm yeah, saying? Man, totally, totally. So it's, just back, it's off the back of what I was saying. Like, what I realised... Is like, I need to sort my shit out, what's going on inside here. Right. Then I can deal with people better. Absolutely. And I always just say, yo, how comes like the man them? Like I come from different schools, innit? Like, so the man them is like, you know, like whether it was like back in the days, man wanted to make money together. But it could just be, you know, the man who makes a bit more money than the rest of the man there. Man get red eye in it. You know, like there's just this internal stuff that goes on within the individual that then has an impact on, you know, on the white, on, on the wider community. Then they just say like, how comes man then we can never sit around a table and just like and really build like somewhere down the line, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. something comes up in it. And it was, you know, one I used to think like, ah, oh, because everybody wants to be the leader. You know, like not everybody was comfortable in just like holding, you know, like right, my man, like right now, Chucky's like running this thing here. Yeah, like, let's just back him in it. Like he's the man, you know, kind of like a Wu-Tang thing. Mm. Like right, right now, Method Man's a man. We're just all going to get behind him right. and push this team. Right, like, right, right. Nah, everyone wanted to be the leader in it. There was that aspect of it. But what I found out as I matured more and more is like, 
man were just insecure. Mm -hmm. It was all to do with insecurities with man. Like, man was uncomfortable with somebody else appearing to know more or do more or be better. And I want to be seen to be, you know, all of these kind of things there. And I'm just saying that to say that the circle that I'm around now and we all partake, bro, that don't rise. That don't come up as an issue, innit? Like, I'm happy being a follower to a man who I know is a great leader. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when it's time for me to lead, bro, like, man can lead, innit? And I'm going to lead you in the best way that I can. And when I feel like man can't do that, it's like, I'm going to call on, I always say it's like a football team, bro. Man know football, innit? Like, not everybody can be the striker, fam. Like, man do need a right back, left back, boom. And it's just like not playing your position. And for me, going back to that community kind of approach, that's how we need to approach it, innit? And when man's shining, let's give him the light, bro. Put the light on him because man is shining. He's going to take us forward. But when it's off, like, he's no less, no, no, no more undervalued than any one of us. You know what I'm saying? And for me, that's the kind of, like, option alternative that mushrooms and others offer perfect example being if you go back to the 70s and stuff 60s and 70s when they elite made it illegal that's what all those folks that were doing what were they doing they said they were just hugging trees hugging each other it was all about peace and love and all that type of stuff they now used to clown all that type of stuff but then after's like what does man not need peace and love in our community <laughs> do we not need why am i gonna fight peace and love yeah. like for real like that, there's nothing wrong with peace and love is there no. like yo so if that can promote peace and love inside myself Inside my house, on my street, in my borough, in the capital, in the country, why wouldn't we promote that? Yeah, the powers that be may not want that in that way, just due to the narrative, but I'm just talking about us as individuals. Like, we, as you said, we have the power, man. So we could do that if we wanted to, it's on us. So I'll just put that out there for people to just, yeah, make their own decisions of what they want to do with, on their own path. Darren, you've been sensational, bro. No, I appreciate it. All the knowledge, you, man. I really I appreciate up. you coming by and like, and, I'm talking from your perspective and stuff like that. Like I've learned, I've learned a lot, but I'm gonna learn even more when I listen back. I don't usually listen back to episodes, mm. but there's there's so much things that you said that I kind of just want to look into myself. Do you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And um, and I'm sure that this will be very useful in some way to like a lot of mm. the people that watch this man. So bro, I'm massively appreciating. Hopefully like we'll come and we'll chop it up again and, you're ready, and have a good man, bro. good reasoning still. Maybe I can bring some of my hood villains in there. Right. It's, 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 yeah, exactly. Show you, like, what, is there really one good. thing that any, like is there one thing that you believe that everyone needs to know about? I always ask this at the end yeah, and it can be anything. It could mm. be a book, be a, could be a documentary, could be a, a clothing brand. It could be literally anything. Did you have you seen anything recently that you feel like people need to know about? Oh man, yeah. So you know, I'm biased like mushrooms, isn't it? That's the easy answer. <laughs> yeah, but um, what I found out. So this is what, what you know. What I just is like you know in this mushroom relationship that I have with mushrooms and lightening my load. I just think it's really important to like for me to express what it's allowed me to do. And when I get if we're going deep, it's allowed me to confront my fear of death and dying interesting and what i come to realize this mystery system the secret societies of all these different traditions have all been set up so that you confront or face death and it sounds far-fetched to people like what do you mean i'm like if you go to places like mexico you go to places like haiti there's different cultures where like they have certain celebrations they got day of the dead for example in mexico we call it halloween here you know what i'm saying it's like where they're like culturally they invite death into the house, they acknowledge their ancestors and stuff like that. And I used to think like, why, what's all that about? But I've come to realize that if you dance with death, yeah, and confront it and deal with it, you actually will live a more liberated life because mm. you no longer have the fear, especially if it's a fear of something that doesn't really exist. Mm. So where am I going with that? You should watch the movie, Big Fish, if you've not watched it, old classic movie with Ewan McGregor. It's not even that old, but you know what I'm saying? Like Ewan McGregor called Big Fish. And it's all about this boy as their boys, them going, I won't spoil it, but you know, they, they've they been told that there's this place where you can go to and if you look this woman in the eye, you find out how you die. Wow. So they all go up there, there's like four or five of them, they run up to the hill, the woman opens the door, four of them run off and they just leave one man there by himself in it. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're a brave one, innit? And then she lifts off her patch, she goes like, you really wanna see? He's like, yeah, she lifts off his pa her patch, he looks in her eye, cause if you've got to look at the patch underneath the eye and he sees how he dies, innit? So then when he comes back, all the brethren's like, what did you see? Did you find out? He's like, yeah, yeah. They're like, so what happened? He goes like, like I'll show you, innit? Then as he's moving through life, not just the day, but moving through life, he has certain challenges that occur during life. Perfect example being, I don't want to say too much, but like he has a, 
there's a girl in the movie and he likes the girl. She's got a boyfriend. The boyfriend keeps warning, look, I keep seeing you talking to my girl. If I keep seeing you talking to a girl, I'm going to move to you, innit? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking to my girl. But the girl in there, they're just friends, innit? She kind of likes him. He likes her, but he ain't trying it like that. And then the guy sees him another time and he's with bag load of his brethren, innit? So imagine we're coming to move to you. We're like, yo, Chucky, we told you stop talking to man's girl, innit? Like, we're going to move to you. Then my man's like, oh, shit. Then he's like, hold on a minute. This isn't how I die. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Rolls up his sleeve. Even start says, saying, what? Come yeah, then, yeah, yeah. swing it out then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So man them can relate to that, yeah? Man them should be able to relate to that. Hey, I hear that. And I'm just saying that there's many... Hey, could you imagine? <laughs> oh, that would be funny, bro. So when you know how you die, you don't have that fear, bro. Yeah. You live. And that's going back to that point that you spoke about the man. The man am I shooting the shanghai bro? Because man shook. Mm. Man, I'm scared. I, mm. I know it. They know it. We know it. I was watching one of 21 Savage just yesterday. Man sent it to me and he's like, yo, they was like, yeah, what are you scared? He was like, bro, I'm scared of everything, everybody. Like, yeah, yeah. that's why I've been doing what I've been doing. Like, I moved the way I did. He goes, bro, he goes, because of what I've seen, what I've experienced, man shook, in it. So I'm just going back to that. If man are shook out here, bro, that's what I know. But man, are not, so man are not comfortable, confident enough to say, bro, I'm scared. I'm shook. Like, how do I address that? And yeah. that's why I shared what I shared. Like, ultimately, bro, like, man, face your fears. The ultimate fear of death, you know. And man might say, yeah, I'm not scared of death. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, like, I mean, I talk about death quite a lot here sometimes. And I talk about it a lot in my, around, around my friendship groups mm, and just around mm, people mm, in that. Because mm. I always just believe that we should talk about it more. I yeah. think, you know, it's the one thing that we all know is going to happen. But it's such a big taboo. No one wants to talk about it and whatnot. And then it confronts people. And then, like, obviously it just fucks them to bits which I mean it would anyway even regardless yeah, 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 for, yeah. depending on like the certain situations or circumstances or whatever but like but for me you know I, I'm not I'm not scared of what whatever the afterlife mm, is supposed mm, to mm, bring mm, or whatnot. Mm. In fact, I'm 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 super intrigued. Yeah. I'm like and I'm curious. Do you get what I'm saying? I I can't <laughs> lie and say that I'm not apprehensive about how I get there. Mm. I'm a bit apprehensive about that. But the actual thing of what happens. Yeah. Now, do you know what? One time it's a close off I was really ill in my bed, yeah. I woke up and I just couldn't breathe. Mm. I literally I could not any time I took a deep breath I could not same, breathe bro same, it was like same. super short of breath <laughs> and um and it hurt and I was lying there and I was thinking and it, this was going on for like a couple of hours here and I thought oh sh like it was a genuine thought like I'm actually gonna this I'm gonna die yeah, like I yeah, thought like yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah so at yeah, first yeah. I was like shook terrified what not then in the end I said you know what chuck <laughs> I just laid on the bed and I just thought, if this is happening now, it's just gonna happen, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm ready for it. And I laid on my bed and I just like, I closed my eyes, fell asleep, whatnot, woke up and I was gassed that I was actually, yeah, that yeah. I was all right. But, but it was just a, a level of acceptance. I wasn't scared about, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, judgment yeah, yeah, day or yeah, this, yeah, that yeah, and the yeah, fourth yeah. or whatever. Like, whatever happens after that happens, I'm ready for that. And bro, what's really, I know we wanna round it up, but what's yeah. big off that is that, that's the approach that you need for mushrooms and psychedelics, bro. That's exactly it. That's yeah, the qualification. Yeah, that's that's the qualification. Yeah, you'd be like, <laughs> and like Kalindi said, he goes, bro, you're gonna be shook, but yeah. just keep moving forward, innit? Right, right. And then if we go back to the whole death thing, just imagine, bro, like you said, bro, I don't know. Imagine you could practice dying. Imagine like, you know, you got a driving test next week, yeah? You you got to prepare for your driving test, innit? Right. It's the, you know it's coming, but you got to prepare for it. You got to practice for it. That's like death. This thing that we all know is coming, nobody's exempt from it why are we not exploring that or practicing it and i'm just saying that to say that's what the ancient mystery systems are all about right they're all about practicing dying knowing that just like mario world when you died you know what you can put the coins in again and press continue right you can change your avatar if you want to you can do yeah, yeah, yeah. and like once you clock that you yeah. clock the game in it and that's like what this thing is about that's why i said Big Fish, you and McGregor, boom, it all leads you towards all of that there, man, and just having a liber liberated life. Darren, love for coming through, my brother. Big up, man. I appreciate massively, the massively, massively appreciate it, my G. Nah, for real, man. Yeah, man. Blessed right, love nice, every man. time. Salute. Thanks Big for listening, up. everyone, yeah? Love. Peace.